before we get into today's episode, which is on Bernie Madoff, I want to talk to you guys about our new sponsor, Yada. Yada, Y-O-T-T-A. Yada is a new app that's giving people the chance to win cash prizes without ever losing a cent. It's like the lottery, but you literally never lose money. It's a savings account where every $25 deposited gives you a ticket into a weekly sweepstakes to win anywhere from $0.10 cents to the $10 million jackpot. Every night a number drops, and at the end of the week, the more numbers you've matched, the more money you make. And your money is FDIC insured, so it's like any other bank account. Download Yada in the App Store today and use the code MACRO when signing up to receive 100 extra tickets to win cash in next week's sweepstakes. And remember that you can't lose money. That is Yada, Y-O-T-T-A. Use the code MACRO when signing up. Yada, Y-O-T-T-A. Use the code MACRO when signing up. All right, welcome back to Macro Dosing, the only podcast that you're allowed to listen to because it's the only one that exists on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher. Where else do people listen to, to podcasts these days? Audible. Audible, computers at the local library. Mm-hmm. So make sure to subscribe on all of those. Maybe in a book. YouTube. YouTube. YouTube, yeah, check it out on YouTube. Also, the Science Fair is up on YouTube. If you haven't checked it out already, uh, go watch it. It's a nice breezy hour long video, mm-hmm. uh, but it got people loved it. Thank you, Avery. We appreciate it. Yeah, you were a little skeptical of the time before. I was wrong. Yeah. I'm, I can admit it. I was wrong. Listen, I, when Avery gave me the, the the reason why he wanted to make it an hour and said, well, the podcast is like four hours and people like that, um, that sold me. So, Avery, great job. Yeah, my holdout. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> we appreciate you. Uh, today, we welcome back Billy Football. Billy, welcome back to the show. Thanks, guys. It's been a month. I don't know. Should we clap for that? Yeah, we're, we're he learned, he grew. Yeah, we're like clapping some, like sabbatical or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> we're clapping for Billy um, for for the celebration to mark the occasion of Billy's mm-hmm. return. The family's back together. The family's yeah, back y'all crea- together. Y'all, y'all, Heike, uh created a martyr though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People are like free Billy, man. He was just late. You guys are assholes. I'm like, bro, I didn't make the call. You can't get out my mentions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, Billy. Yeah, he did. He, Speaking he of martyrs, Shinzo. Okay, the well, former I, prime minister. We're getting right into the, it. I was going to ask you what you've been thinking about, dude. I got go. thoughts, man. I've been keeping these bottled up. Um, we could start there. <laughs> uh. We got, we got, uh, what happened, Billy? You want to explain what happened to so the former vice president, former president, I think, right? He was the leader, a former prime minister of Japan got shot with a printable gun, a 3D printed gun. Uh, he got shot with it. He's dead. Uh, that was wild. Apparently, it had to do with (laughs) his associations with a church, the Unification Church of Japan. Did you guys talk about this the, at all? Uh, the no. dog walk did, but we didn't. Yeah, so so, so the Moonies is the name of the Korean church that, no, that the assassins, no, but the assassin's parents were like very active in the Mooney church and they lost a lot of money because it's cult-like. Yeah. And um, I think Shinzo, is it Abe, Abe? Abe, yeah, I think. Abe. Abe. If you're gonna be a president of anything, just don't don't be named Abe. We're, yeah. we're 0 for 2 on Abe's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are they the Moonies? Are they That's the same funny. thing? Is the Unification, unification That's, Church? The Moonies is the Unification Church of Korea. Church of Japan Moonies? Are they Moonies? I'm talking about the Korean one. Oh, is the Korean the, one's is different? the Moonies, yeah. Okay, so I have a hot take. and This has been going around. So Abe sort of centered a lot of his ideas about ensuring population growth in Japan because they have such a terrible... Uh, birth not I, I mean it's just low birth rate nobody fucks they're bad at they're bad at babies making babies and he was a big like we should be having babies right now and there's many takes that he like in his sort of sentiment uh he was a very controversial figure in japan as many le- le- leaders are but they think that he purposely tried to get shot or he had himself shot so that his uh message of Japan should be fucking more lived on and he you think made it, himself a martyr. You think it was a reverse? Yeah. If that's true, he's the most to li- dedicated to a bit that anyone well, has ever well, been. No, no, but not even a bit, but like, think about it. He's worried about the future of the Japanese people. and they're Enough like, to kill himself? Yeah, because if he do- didn't do that, then the whole of like the Japanese people would cease to exist. How many people, how many weird dudes in Japan that are buying panties out of a vending machine are like, you know what? 
Abe died. I think I really need to like go get myself a wife now. <laughs> well, they might actually think about like martyrism is very powerful. Uh, there, there was a guy. Billy's not like entirely talking out of his ass with this being a possibility because there was a guy, um, a high up government connected lawyer. I want to say in Guatemala. Yeah, that did this exact thing where he set up a hitman to to, to have himself killed on a specific day because he had a he had a tape that he wanted to be released implicating the president. I think it was Guatemala. Somebody will correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, but implicating the president. I think the vice president, um, a lot of the higher ups in the government of actively running a criminal enterprise. And he knew that if he were to be killed, that tape that he would yeah. then release being like, hey, I made this tape in case I got killed. He knew that that would be all over the news. And I think he also lost a lot of his family in the years preceding that. So he didn't have a lot to live for. Um, and it was used as a, as a tactic for him to mm -hmm. get that information out. They ended up finding out exactly what happened. So it's not like it hasn't happened also, before. I think it's a, just a very hot take that Billy's delivering no, this but like, right now. All, I have so many hot takes. This is just the first. I don't even want to talk okay. about suspension. I just want to talk about these takes. Also, let's not act like self-sacrifice isn't part of uh, the Japanese cultures dating back to the samurai where it, there's a lot of honor in dying for a cause such as just the uh, like existence of the Japanese people moving forward. So he did look pretty surprised to get shot as most are. Yeah. I, I, I didn't watch the <laughs> shooting tape. Did, did you see it? Is there a tape you saw? I saw one of the videos of it. Yeah. I haven't seen the tape. The gun is crazy. It's Dude, like this a, 3d. Okay. Now we're getting to guns. It's like a sawed off shock. Are you sure it was 3d printed? It was 3d yeah, printed. It was. it was just like, it was, 3D I know he printed. made it himself. It didn't look like a gun. It definitely was. That's like electrical tape holding that shit yeah. together. This shit was, it didn't look like a gun. It's sort of, I, from what I saw, there's like no triggers, not built like a gun, but it was like, almost looked like a, like a cylinder that just basically like Roman candled real bullets at him. Oh, huh. so now here's my next take. Wait, Speaking real, of guns. real quick, 3D printing. People are just going to be able to make their own guns left and right. Yeah. Now. So there's no, I mean, gun control. I mean, yeah, that's not, been not, happening. Not talking it's about a serious yeah. issue. And there's so many printable versions. I mean, I was looking into it one day and there's some, tons of files out there where you can print whatever the fuck you want. And I saw some TikToks of some dudes shooting some of these things and they're not as reliable as real guns. He was like saying how sometimes they fuck up, but uh, I, I'm not going to get into gun control, but I mean, we've been seeing like since I've been gone, there's been like how many mass shootings? Yeah. Interesting. There was like three or some two or three. since you okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <Fucked though. up. laughs> no, but what I'm saying is from for the second we started talking about this, remember when I, like, Okay, there's the gun issue. Yeah, that's one issue. Why aren't there more people looking into these places on the internet where we know these groups are gathering in, like getting pushed to these mass shootings? Herschel Walker's trying to. That was, that that his was a major platform. Get that his people point? to investigate. <laughs> where men, men on, are looking at women who are looking media. at social media. Yeah. yeah, men on social media looking at women who are looking at social media. We need to have- Brilliant policy we, mind. We need, to, we need to investigate all that, figure out what's going on. Um, but no, I, Billy's right. I, we did talk about this on the show. Thanks for listening, Billy. But um, we talked about how there are uh, there are known places where people yeah. are like actively encouraging people to do these shootings and like calling it the high score. And it's like a it's it's a sick subculture that does exist out there. Um, but we completely lack the resources or the desire yeah. to really figure out a way to well, to stop these things before they happen. Like that July 4th guy fucking had so much, like literally like, in, for lack of a better term, he had so much content out there. Like why the fuck aren't we seeing this shit before it well, happens? This is what y'all argue against all the time. Like free speech. They got free speech and they can say what they want and do what they want without any kind of regulatory right, but, oversight. That's the issue. That's what we say. That, that's the whole point of regulating speech is like, sure, you can say whatever you want, but some of that shit should be looked at. Right, right. But that's what we're saying. There's agreement on that, but like there's a big difference between- There's not down. agreement on that. No, no. There, I mean, the thing is there's stuff taken down that isn't that. Like how come that gets through, but well, this is, just popular- that's, that's, that's the thing is like usually the people that aren't for it, they just don't agree with who's- like mm. 
like who's who has the 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 gavel that's what that's mm-hmm. what the issue is right and so you're always going to have that as long as there's any kind of regulations somebody's not going to like how they're regulated which is a part of the show but it is really yeah good. i mean all, by the way all these are just takes uh not necessarily fully invested in them but roe v wade trying to up the birth rates for world war three so the americans have more soldiers Okay, yeah, that's a take. I'm going to count that as a take. On the Say it again. Board. My daughter was asking me something. What did you say? Uh, they're trying to increase birth rates for a larger fighting force for World War III by repealing Roe v. Wade. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. I'm not really like saying anything else about it, but it could be a possibility. It could be. But World War III is not going to be really, like, in my opinion. It's just going to be like, I thought this, this is going to be nuke. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be nuke. It's going to be nuke war. So it's like, there are going to be many, you don't need many soldiers for that. I know, but did you see the um, New York City released a PSA about mm-hmm. the nuclear bomb threat? Yeah. It was yeah. like so vanilla as fuck. It was so like not yeah. nuclear. I was looking at the <laughs> old nuclear PSAs from like the 50s and 70s, and they were all like like fallout type stuff. Like sh- there was more showing bombs. It was a little more like, like in this one was just so- like, it looked like a- She literally, uh, she walked into the frame and she's like, so it hit. <laughs> She's like, don't ask how, don't ask when, but this is what you should do. But she was like, the big I'll, one hit. The big, I was like, oh my like, God. What? I felt so bad. So my shorty was, she we just got all her stuff moved in. Like, and we're literally, she's literally got, got her car and she's bringing like the last bag of the stuff uh, from her car into the room. And uh, I put on one of those YouTube fake P- PSA that oh, there's sh- a nuke, nuke coming from Russia. So I put it on and I was like, oh my fucking Oh my, I'm doing that shit there, like totally selling this shit. And she's like, what? And she's walking in and she just looks and she's like, oh, oh my God, I gotta call my mom. She was like, fucking <laughs> proud. So I was funny. like, yeah, I, I didn't know she was gonna go for it, but she went for it. It was the funniest shit. It was, I felt bad. I you, felt bad. It was you did War of the Worlds on her. Like you faked. I, yeah, yeah. 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 I fake. I said it said. I don't know. You can find it on YouTube. It says that there was there was nukes already sent that were going to be hitting in the next like thirty minutes from Russia, and it was uh, I think L A, San Diego, Houston, New York, and D C. I think was like the five cities. That's that's so fucked and that's, she was like fucking freaking out. <laughs> that's the first thing you did when she moved in with you. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what have I signed up for? She like just walked in the house. It was hilarious. <laughs> I remember back I in, I, I want to say 2011, there was uh, like a oh. leaked report that came out from North Korea. It was like North Korea's plans for attacking the United States. And it listed the cities that they were going to fire the missiles at first. Or there was like there was like a picture of a board that Kim Jong-un had up behind him. And it showed the targets that they were looking at with an initial strike. And it was like L.A., New York, D.C., and then Austin, Texas was on there. And I was in Austin at the time and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> it, Austin, was like, dude. <laughs> it was like Christmas Eve, wasn't it? I feel like I remember uh, we had like gone to a movie or something and came home and I was like, oh, we're about to get nuked by North Korea. I'm pretty sure it was Christmas Eve. There was there was another thing that happened in Hawaii a couple years ago. It was 2017 uh, and the entire state of Hawaii got yeah. an emergency text message sent to them. If you were there, you got it on your phone and it said along the lines of a nuclear, a suspected nuclear weapon has been launched. You have like five minutes, prepare yourself, get inside. And it was just, it was some guy that was testing the system and he wasn't supposed to actually send it out to everybody, but he forgot to check the like test button. Yeah, and so it went out as a mass message to everybody there. Everybody panicked for like ten minutes. Why didn't he just test the word "test"? Like this is a test <laughs> instead of this is a nuclear bomb. I don't know, but, but I have it, a hot take about it, that. It was it was the night before Marcus Mariota played against the New England Patriots in the wild card game. Matt Patricia, former nuclear rocket scientist, hmm. was defensive coordinator on the Patriots. Marcus hmm. Mariota, his whole family's in Hawaii. He was the quarterback on the Titans. Were they trying to throw him off the night before? We don't have the answers to those questions. <laughs> I was uh, I was doing some research in my my time in suspension on drone technology, and how a lot of drone technology uh, wasn't you know a lot of the commercially available drone technology was uh, government technology you know 10, 20 years ago, and then I was sort of thinking about. Uh, what the implications of that are. So if they were able to fly drones like we have commercially now, 
back in uh, early 90s, even late 80s were using them. Uh, what does the government have technologically wise now that we so I've officially decided and we can all sleep better at night that all those UFOs we're seeing are 100 percent like the U.S. governments and they are the nuclear defense system for the United States. That's like secret to everybody else except a select few. So those drones that they're seeing, like all the naval pilots are seeing, are are like protectors, and they're shutting. Like if a nuke gets shot towards us, they like you know iron dome it, and because they can move at super like physically impossible speeds, that they can fight these hypersonic missiles Russia has and stuff. So that like makes me feel really safe. That's good. So we shall be safe. That's one less thing to worry about. Yeah. So nukes. Those don't matter. Those missiles are very, very fast too. Yeah, they're pretty much impossible to get shot down because there's the rockets that we would use to shoot them um, could not ever catch up. And we have to calculate the exact precise point of impact that it would need. And since they're going so fast, it's yeah. extremely tough to figure out. Okay, it's traveling at this speed right now with uh, the air resistance that it's going to be meeting. How mm. what will the missile be traveling at in a thousand miles? And then you have to calculate that exact spot. Trust me, I've tried this in my digital combat simulator. Hmm. It's next to impossible to shoot those things But if out. you had something that moved uh, physically impossibly, like these UFOs we're seeing, yeah. that could track it down, it could. It could. So I think, like, we're safe, boys. Okay. Good. Or, like, hypothetically, there could have been a new heading towards Hawaii, but our system killed it before it could actually get there. Good point. Yeah. That's an outstanding. That's I hadn't thought about that. Uh, now for some more lighthearted... Um, uh, thoughts that I had. Uh, Led Zeppelin had a fireplace in their private jet, fully working. Uh, that's impossible. Okay. Like you're flying, you need a chimney. Uh, and even if it was a gas fire, uh, that's not safe in a oxygen oxygenated pressurized plane. Right. That's why you can't really smoke on planes. You can't even bring a Samsung Galaxy on a plane. Didn't know that. Well, the old ones. Oh yeah. They would blow up. Yeah. yeah. So how'd that happen? I don't know. I, this is the first I'm hearing about the fireplace on the plane. Yeah, look it up. It's wild. Does does the live tour? Does their private jet have a fireplace? That plane's sick. It I is a sick. Plane. Oh, there's a. I didn't see that. Oh, it's Billy, crazy what blood and oil money will get you. Yeah, you gotta you gotta look that up, Billy. Hmm. Speaking of the Saudis, we'll get your ranch in Crawford, Texas, is what will get you. <laughs> uh, so the dollar is now worth more than a euro for the first time in a long Let's time. Let's go. That's fucking U.S. supremacy. Thank Hell you, yeah. Brandon. Yeah. Right, Big T. Yeah. I thought he didn't control. Wait, does he like or that. doesn't he? We, well, think, I'm asking you. I, thought, way, I thought he did it. I thought that's where we were right now. He doesn't. Okay, I don't actually he doesn't. think that's good, uh, the dollar being over the euro, but as a young child, knowing that the euro and like the pound were worth more than a dollar used to really piss me off. Uh, that's some like elementary nationalism right there. Yeah, the pound used to just kick the shit out yeah, of the dollar. Yeah, it's like, why is that? Like, I always used to like look down at like, Oh, like funny money from different countries. And then like knowing that we were funny money to other people's countries really pissed me off. I'm just my, my mindset is as long as we're beating Canada, as long as I'm looking at the back of a book, a hardcover book, and it lists the American price and then the Canadian price is like two dollars more. I'm fine with that. Well, since yeah. the dollar isn't even worth the dollar anymore, I'm glad it's worth a euro at least. Yeah. Uh, they're trying to take our jewels. That's fucking get the fuck away from my jewel, big government. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get libertarian. We need to fight for the right to jewel because these puff bars, I think it's China. I think China's trying to take away our jewels um, because they manufacture all those puff bars and those cheap ass soap smelling vapes, which are probably way worse for you and all manufactured in China. Jewel, uh, at least their pods are made in the US. And I like that American made vape. Uh, <laughs> in my lungs, not that Chinese vape. Was, was that a, I, I feel like the Trump administration was the first, their FDA originally floated out the jewel ban. Yeah, but that was, it was even under like, I, Obama. And for the record, I think that I don't know, something is going to have to happen with Juul because it's so addictive. It's way, it's way worse than cigarettes. We've talked about that in the show. I know, but it's, it's like, not, a, it's, it's, I think physically harmful. I don't think it's anywhere. I think, or it was just, put together by big tobacco to get people hooked again and just get people smoking cigs again. Mm -hmm. Because I know a lot of people who started jeweling like high school and even middle school and who were ripping it in the bathrooms who now just full out acoustic. It's cra it. it's crazy that 
kids in in middle schools now are just like ripping the the equivalent of cigarettes in classes. Yeah, I could never imagine that. Like they're just blowing into their shirts and trying to get away with it. That sounds pretty cool, though. I'm not I gonna know, lie. I think it's better than cigs over the long run. I don't know about that. Um, did you guys talk about the Georgia Stones? We did talk about the Georgia Stones. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. What I are mean, your thoughts? I mean, they got blown up and then destroyed within a couple of days. I don't know what's behind it, um, but it's definitely no I'm bueno. With, I'm a hundred percent with Big T on his take. What was your take, Big T? I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I don't remember. Uh, I'll remind you. Uh, I don't care that they were there before, and I don't care that they're gone now. Yeah, I didn't know they were there before. Uh, they yep. were high-key u- uh, eugenics. Had, like, one of their commandments was, like, eugenics and uh, population control. Um, so I think it was just too obvious. They got rid of it. Um, next on the list, uh, the Viking sagas talked about when dingoes. Uh, in the same way that Native Americans talked about Wendigos, so the Vikings talked about encountering these like Billy. Just it, maybe there might be like deer. I don't know, maybe like one or two percent of people out there that don't know what a Wendigo is. Can oh, you when, that? okay. I thought I thought we were dealing with <laughs> real. Like, I thought this is a conspiracy podcast. You should come prepared. So a Wendigo, <laughs> a Wendigo is a mythological creature or evil spirit which originates from folklore, the plains, and the Great Lakes natives. Um, so basically, a lot of the times they're seen. They're like shapeshifters. Uh, they a lot of the times look like walking upright uh, deer, and they're pretty gnarly. Uh, they're they, it's it's uh, they they they're <laughs> cannibalistic. So these, I think that's the first time I've heard that word like used like in a real like for real. What they're, they're pretty gnarly. Like I thought it was like a they joke. Eat people. Yeah, gnarly is a it's a throwback of a word. It's like eighties, nineties. <laughs> well, they're gnarly. Yeah, they, they eat. They're they people who transfer <laughs> form into these beasts, and then they try to eat people. There's actually a cultural psychosis. I think we. I don't know if we talked about this before, but there's uh, uh, Wendigo psychosis is a cultural a culture bound syndrome. So uh, we talked about how schizophrenia in Eastern nations isn't seen as malevolent. Like the voices aren't like telling them to do bad things it's just culturally hearing voices was like hearing the voices of ancestors but in uh, cultures where hearing voices is you know the ideas of demons like god doesn't talk like god or your ancestor doesn't talk to you usually like a devil possesses you uh so in some first nation communities they get wendigo psychosis and wendigo psychosis is like a sort of a, a, a culture bound schizophrenia where people think that they're uh, they get like an intense craving for human flesh and become like intense fear of becoming a cannibal. Mm-hmm. And like, it's sort of, so anyway, Wendigos are these beasts that uh, were described by the native Americans, but also the Vikings who landed in Newfoundland, like the first Europeans to ever reach, uh, arguably the first Europeans to ever reach America were thought to be the Vikings, uh, Leif Erikson, uh, Eric, the red, you know, Iceland, Greenland, little bit of canada they encountered native americans and this is probably the one cultural like clash we've know like one of the least about and it's one of the most fascinating but they both describe uh when dingoes so i'm low-key thinking that when dingoes fought vikings out of north america which is the most metal like crossover i ever think i think that would be an awesome piece of art that someone should do just like vikings versus wendigos battling um you know i might write a script about what i think happened um what else okay that you're right though i think i think the wendigo viking battle if they had like an epic battle yeah. that expelled the vikings from north america i think that would be very metal or just like the vikings showing up being like oh look Nice land. Let's do farming. Why are the Vikings Russian? They're not Russian. They're, I was trying. It's a little more Norwegian with it. I could do full Russian, but they won't do it together. Um, Read your next thought in Russian. Yeah. Uh, um. Oh. Uh, that brief moment where people knew that their numbers had power in Storm Area 51 and Lollapalooza gangs. Remember that time where we like started or- orchestrating events to like storm Area 51? Yeah. Storm Lollapalooza. It'd be like a Facebook 
yeah. events. And like people were starting to become conscious that like populism and, you know, high numbers and banding together could actually accomplish great things. What yeah. what happened? What, when did that stop? I don't know if it was that deep. I thought I think we all just thought it would be funny to make Facebook events. No, but it was just like a things. cultural awakening. They were storming Lollapalooza. You're talking about you're talking about the uh, the proletariat joining together against yeah. the bourgeois. <laughs> Billy's yeah. Billy's low key discovering Marxism. Yeah, I think he is. <laughs> like, uh, and then so yeah, I think the most powerful one of those I seen was uh, anonymous, anonymous. Uh, did that early early on too? Remember, it was like Long Cat Long. They had, it's like they were they first discovered memes and they had this common shared thing and they all got together and it was like really um, fucking up institutions. They were like, what were they? There's a whole I watched the whole thing on it, but they were like, PFT, you remember this? Yeah, I'm probably better with the details. I know I, I don't know any of the details behind it, but I do remember when Anonymous like first started. Um, like banding together and they would just like pick a different target that they wanted to go after. Yeah. It'd and be so like they would financial do, institutions, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And they say they would like, it, it was, it was first they did it with like with trolling people, like with video games and shit. But then it started like, they really started doing like, like you said, financial institutions and stuff. That that was the first time I think like it was really impactful and powerful. But, well, before yeah, that, there would be flash mobs. So it would, people would just get together and like dance in a library for a while. Mm. That's kind of what yeah. we used it for. And then it became, okay, let's storm area 51. I don't know if it really fell off that much. I think people are still doing it, but the Area 51 thing stood out because everyone kind of wanted to know what was going on there. Yeah. I think the last big one was uh, protests over Roe v. Wade. Yeah, they've been doing that. Yeah. Um, I got a couple other. Uh, Coyote Peterson, this dude had a super fake Bigfoot skull and said like, oh, I found Bigfoot, uh, but it was just a gorilla skull. I think it was like a mold of a gorilla skull. Kind of haven't really followed up on that, but he said, "Oh, I found a Sasquatch hominid skull in uh, the Pacific Northwest." Is that the dude that gets stung by shit? Yeah. All right, so we should have him on the show, Coyote Peterson. I don't know if you've seen his YouTube videos. Can we yeah. put that in, in a list, Avery? Yeah, absolutely. I think he's he's top notch. Yeah, that he, he would be a great guest. So he's he, huge on YouTube. He's a guy that he um, he gets stung by the most painful insects and animals to get stung by and then he records it and then just like he just screams for a while and then tries to describe in detail what the what the pain feels like it is the most sick asmr this is the most like boy thing ever As why in, like, sicko <laughs> <laughs> his that's, youtube page brave good, wilderness has 20 million followers or subscribers i mean it's a good point though mad dog like i could never that's see such a dumb fucking thing to do <laughs> A, a woman would never be like, okay, so I'm out here with a bullet ant <laughs> and I've got it in a mason jar and I'm going to hold the jar upside Does down. Does he like aggravate it too to like make it worse? Yeah. Why? How is he alive? Like how has he not died of like being well, he, like, poisoned? He, I don't think he goes after like King Poisonous Cobras. Things? Yeah, he's not actually getting bit by he, something else. He's not so. getting injected uh, with venom. <laughs> So He's getting stung by wasps that have some some venom in but them. But not anything that'll kill him. Nothing that'll kill you. Something that'll just make you hurt and make your entire body hurt for days. So he just... Wasps have venom? Yeah. yeah. Like certain types probably. No, no. Bees have venom too. That's, is that why it like... Like really hurt. yeah that's yeah. why like your body sure has like a reaction to it. Yeah. If uh, ah, So like what, if, a, if a wasp stings a spider, the spider will die because there's enough venom in, oh, in the stinger it. to like inject Kill into that. a tiny little spider body have you ever heard of the gimpy gimpy no it is a plant in australia and if coyote peterson was real he'd do this it's called the suicide plant and a bunch of soldiers in world war ii are stationed in australia uh and it happens a lot they see this plant and it's a big leaf perfect for something like wiping your ass and people will wipe their ass with this thing and kill themselves because it's so painful. I've heard of some of those plants in Australia, New Zealand, yeah, where it's like touch them. They're like a, a cousin of the bull nettle, yeah. which is a plant that we had in, in Texas, actually on the field that I played rugby on for a while in Austin. So part of our job was because we bought this giant piece of land and then we had to clear it off. We had to level it. We had to put sod down the entire thing and build our own field. And as we were doing that, we came across there was like bull nettle. Um, on the field that we would play on. So sometimes in practice, somebody would get tackled onto it and their entire leg would just get this massive rash on it that would itch and burn like hell. Like poisonous plants are actually, they're they are fascinating to me. Yeah, I mean, the way they, plants are, their defense systems are wild. There's a guy on YouTube named The Backyard Scientist who 
touched the Gimpy Gimpy. No way. I yeah. don't believe and, it. And in Google, when it pops up, it has like key moments in the video and it just says, how much does it hurt? And then the next key moment is, how do I make this stop? And then the next one is, cold water makes this worse. Oh, and then Jesus. lessons learned. So he survived. Yeah. Here, here's a dumb question. With a Venus flytrap, mm -hmm. do they shit? Uh, um, do you think it just goes back into the soil? No, I think they're one of those like, I don't think cellular respiration has that type of. But what happens if they eat a fly? Hold on, I'll tell you. I think they might open up and just let it fall out. Oh, so um, they kill it and then here. something and else then they eats it? they suck all of it out. Okay, so when the Venus flytrap fly closes shut on a tasty bug meal, for example, it releases chemicals that liquefy all the soft parts. The plant eats the delicious juice but opens back up to let the crunchy bits fall out. Those solids are waste and could be considered plant poop. Yeah. That's metal. Yeah, so they, they, let it out. they basically like put poison juice so all of the like muscle and meat they eat and then they basically spit out the bones. Yeah. Have we tried to build a giant Venus flytrap? Like engineer. Well, that genetic. was Little House of Horrors. Oh, Little Shop of Horrors. Little, yeah, Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah. Um, we should do that. We should make that plant. Well, we try to make the giant frog, which would have been way cooler, but no, no one no. wanted to give me the money to do it. I think we make the giant fly trap. I bet you could buy giant fly traps. How, yeah, I how big the, is giant? I want to find the biggest fly trap and then make it bigger. Fly trap plant. Let's see. I wonder if you could smoke a fly trap. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> now we're talking. Now uh, we're talking, Billy. I got some more. Do you guys remember when all those cattle were dying? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. I just say yes and agree with things like that. Sure. I vaguely remember There was just this. like fields and fields of cattle who were dying. Cattle and they were every day. Bloating. No, but like this was a whole, uh, there was reports in Kansas that said that there's like tons of cattle dying because it was way too hot. Uh, now from what I researched, the cattle were dying. Not uh, They say it was heat and the official explanation is that the cattle were dying because uh, it was not cold enough at night so they could handle the 94 degree temperatures during the day but since it stayed like 70 or 80 at night they didn't have that time to cool down so that repeated over and over time basically killed all of them um it was really crazy you're seeing all these cattle uh just bloated um but yeah that was wild where do we stand on monkeypox billy oh dude i that was next on my list we'll remember the pennsylvania truck crash with the monkeys yeah I wrote so there's a pen, there's a truck crash in Pennsylvania months ago. I actually wrote a whole blog on this, but they didn't post it, Coley, because it's too controversial. Where basically Ooh. China blamed their monkeypox outbreak from months ago on the American monkey bus crash in Pennsylvania, and there's state there's state like state press releases from China that records all this. Well, if, that's fair. If the we Chinese, blame Corona on them, so if the Chinese government's reporting it, then right. But we let have me no choice but to stay. I wrote a whole blog about this, and basically, I legit think that I don't know that like to as a publicity stunt, they may have like a, a, a something happened. But I sent the preview of the blog to you guys; you can read it. But if you look into it, um, and the monkeypox was spread. So this one uh, person who reports on CCP uh, stuff, he's a good follow, said the accident of monkey escape may be directed by CCP for the excuse to blame America, America for deadly virus release. Furthermore, there would be a relationship between hemorrhagic fever and Xi'an in the accident. The whole action may be planned by the general staff of the CCP. Now, I found that from this tweet that reports on the ccp and i started following them during covid and they had they've been pretty legit stuff and the person's based he's one of these internet warriors internet freedom fight fighters uh who is able to access twitter from china um and that's all in there um what billy else? at the risk of stating the obvious uh this entire thing is in chinese <laughs> <laughs> you can click the translate button <laughs> it is all in Chinese. Well, the, um, yeah, I, I don't have a. Uh, it was just also. Text, right, so text. I, I'm looking at this this account right now. Um, the tweet that Billy sent us has 64 retweets, 142 likes. I mean, that's not not bad numbers, but it's not like by any means a viral tweet. Where did you come across this? 
Uh, so I have a professor from college um, who I follow on Twitter um, that he's in contact with a lot of, uh, he, he's like, he's an Asian studies major. And I took one of his classes because I was told it would be gut, but it was actually super interesting. And uh, like was, so I got an access with that. And he's part of this whole part of Twitter that we don't even know about, which is like Chinese reporters who like, like it was huge during COVID because you're getting to hear about, I heard, I was knowing about COVID in like November of 2019. So like I get tons of CCP news. Okay. Um, so, so what's the implication of monkeypox? Uh, I think they had an outbreak monkeypox. Th- this whole outbreak we're having is pretty weird um, because it's pretty hard to catch. Um, I think there's a lot of rumors that's being spread about, it like how it was being spread in rumors there was like orgies which i think is a lot of um like like irrelevant it's like anti it's anti it's anti-gay homo- yeah it's homophobic and basically being like the western lifestyle spreads monkeypox uh-huh. and they're trying to explain away like some outbreaks that are occurring in china uh and it's being pushed by that sort of anti-western sentiment so um so what steps can we take to not get monkeypox you know what i was so wrong about covid because when covid started to happen i just talked shit about it i was just talking shit to covid's face there was no like real rhyme or reason behind why i was feeling this way but i called it like a fraud virus and i said uh that like it hasn't won on the road we're just equating it to sports terms we put zero effort into researching it and it wasn't meant to be taken seriously but then uh, retrospectively uh you look back on it you're like wow i was i was very that was dumb of me not to respect it at the start. Do I need to be overly respectful and cautious about monkeypox? Yeah, I mean, there's there's some. The thing about the monkeypox is I heard like, you had monkeypox. That was contagious. That was contagious. Yeah, well, it's they not, said it's there's not a, airborne, right? It's it's yeah. like you have to basically. It's kind of like staph infection. You gotta like really yeah, rub up against skin. each other. Okay. Skin to skin contact. I yeah. heard, I heard a rumor, um, and I'm not gonna deny or confirm it. But the rumor was that Billy got monkeypox, and that's why he was absent from part of my taking from macrodosing for a while. I don't know. If, did you hear that, Big T? Uh, I'm hearing it now. Yeah, I, it was. It was circulating. <laughs> he was gone for a while. A lot of the accounts that I follow on Twitter that get information like this before everybody else has it, they were they were saying that was. True. And there were other sources that said it was for something different, but these were the good sources. Yeah, no, these were all the all the correct sources that I was looking at. But again, I don't know if that's true or not. You look pretty healthy right now. I mean. I was doing some monkey business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you were. <laughs> I was, yeah, I got monkeypox doing some monkey business. Um, but yeah, I mean, the thing is, if you look into this crash, it's really weird. The truck driver thought he knew he was driving animals, but he thought he was driving cats. That's what it said on the manifesto. And then when the crash occurred, he, uh, he told everyone. The manifest. Came, the manifest. Yeah. Manifesto, totally different. The manifest. Uh, said cats so he told so the a lady who got out of her car to help was like oh i love cats and then she like tried to open one of the cages and was bitten by a monkey that's how outbreak started yeah have and, you seen that movie and there's even this yeah and there's even this tweet of the monkey oh, and then yeah. she was apparently got sick afterwards but she might have and she said it was covid but it all gets weird from there but it seems like if you if you couldn't compete in a nuclear war or stand up war with America without destroying the whole earth and you had to attack it, there's different ways you could do that. Mm. Aaron, can, you, can your daughter hear us right now? No. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure I, I, I want to protect her from Bill, Billy's brain. No, Bill, no, no, no. I've been, I got, I got, I got earphones. Okay. Now. Billy's brain is rated TVMA. I've been, <laughs> we got to put in a V chip where if you're under, if your brain is still developing, you should not be exposed to his thoughts. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, I, this blog needs to be posted. Coley needs to let me post this blog because it has all the evidence in front of you. In fairness to Coley, he hasn't uh, been working in a while, so it wasn't him that did it. Yeah, uh, Coley's Nate, dealing with the, the birth of his second child. Um, yeah, what else do I got on this list? The Hadron, the Hadron Collider got going again. Have we, has, do you think the wor- like has anything weird happened? There's all this yeah, pretty much everything that you've talked about in the last 30 yeah, minutes. Yeah, there's <laughs> flooding. There's tons of flooding. Not to mention the cows. And there's like, I don't know, there's tons of, uh, there's a huge heat wave in Europe and there's tons of waves in Hawaii. I saw Have the big waves those? in yeah. Hawaii. Yeah, those are scary. taking out uh, weddings and shit. Those are scary. That's one thing that I'm always afraid of 
is tidal waves. Tidal waves are terrifying. Yeah. Tidal waves and like rogue waves that sometimes happen on a lake. Have you heard about those? Oh yeah, especially on the Great Lakes. What are they called? The the Seychelles waves. It has or to do like with that? a huge atmospheric wind gust that has to do with atmospheric pressure changing a huge gust of wind picking up wait rogue seish waves don't fuck with the water bro don't fuck with the water i think they're called seish waves but yeah you can be on a on a boat in lake superior and a giant wave will just show up out of nowhere and there's nothing you can do to predict rogue it. wave yeah it's a surface wave that's what was sinking all those ships in the there's so many shipwrecks in the great lakes um so the background the depth of the holes oh man i'm trying to figure All right, out so the, the, exact the hadron collider restarted are you thinking that that the earth ended in 2016 we're on a black hole well i mean remember okay so we've had uh professor brian cranston on not brian cranston nope. brian cox brian cox mm -hmm. different type of professor um <laughs> uh so he was on and he was involved with the collider and remember when i was asking you about that pagan ritual that took place that they were doing there. He was like, oh, it's all, you know, fun and games. It's British humor. Um, yeah, I'm back on the what the fuck was that type shit, you know? Okay, got it. Um, we've got some breaking news happening right now. Uh, David Faraday is going over to the Live Tour. And Charles Barkley is considering joining the Live Tour as an announcer. I was going to say, how can Charles Barkley just join the tour? Did what he did actually join? Tour? No, he's been talking about it. He said he'll he'll meet with he's them. He's meeting with them. What is what is the what is the live for? The, the new, new Saudi uh golf league. Ah, that's hilarious. That's just giving outrageous sums of money to people to go play in it. Tell them I'm open. Facts. I'm all about that bag talk. If they listen, if they're offering that kind of money, you take the money. I'll be I would gladly go shoot a, a 120. So I, I've been I've been thinking a lot about the live tour recently and I've, I've reached the conclusion that I cannot judge somebody for taking 90, a hundred million dollars, life changing money for you, your family, your, your kids. No way. Like I, I can't, I can't ever judge somebody for doing that because although yeah, the Saudi regime is murderous and they have numerous human rights violations and they're, they're very dangerous, scary people. Um, I'm not going to like tell somebody not to take a hundred million dollars. Also. Oh, Oh, oh. Jinx, uh, you owe me a soda. Then oh, you can't sure. talk until you. S I say your name. No, that's not Big true. Big T. Uh, I let you do it. I, why Billy, is everybody not unfortunately asking? Unfortunately, is right. Yeah, you, you know all these people that are I'm that pinch poke owe me a coke or some shit like that. Yeah, you get to uh, pinch him. I, I don't really want half to half the him. soccer teams in him. the world. Pinch him, Billy. I don't. Don't pinch me. I'll fuck I'm, you up. <laughs> I just because I knew I'm something. Calling like that would I'm calling I'm calling Cap on on any aggression. Big T is saying. Right? Uh, I mean, he threatened you're, to you're have a sex teddy, with a dead you're body. You a teddy bear. <laughs> oh, don't touch me. Uh, <laughs> but everybody deriding <laughs> all these guys for joining the Live Tour. Half the soccer teams in the world are owned by, you know, the Saudis, UAE princes, like yeah. all the uh, with. Lord knows how many human rights violate. Why is nobody asking them like you took if this money to come? We have moral qualms with with how we are getting paid because of how the owners of any companies or countries are running. We'd all be broke. That's what I'm saying. I, just, I, just I, saying, I, no, I'm, 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 I'm saying I agree. Yeah. With you. Spin zone. It's also all our money that we're getting back because it's all oil money from americans buying their oil because you just have to get out. like moderately good at golf to, to get it back to get your they're, rebate they're, okay spin zone uh they're crusaders going to the middle east to get rewards back that is quite a spin they're heroes they're, yeah. yeah so they're, they're robin hood yeah so uh big t to answer your question i think that there is a difference between um like a, a saudi prince that owns a soccer team and um, the Saudi public investment fund that runs live because they're running live not to make a profit, not to do anything business. -wise. They're just running it just to launder the reputation. That's the only objective that. Well, they that's have. Um, is that not I don't know if it's the exact same group, but that's the same type of people who just bought Newcastle, right? It's like the Saudi. Yeah, something. I, I don't know enough about the specific owners of Newcastle. I should read up more on that. But I do know that the public investment fund is heavily invested in Chipotle and like a lot of other American businesses, but they're, that's more of an investment where live is just straight up like 
propaganda and a commercial for Saudi Arabia. Now they've done a pretty bad job um, using it as a commercial because every the only thing people talk about is how bad Saudi Arabia is, or they're not not the entire nation, but their their ruling family. That's all people talk about. So I don't know if, if the propaganda is really sinking in. I don't know how good of a job hmm. marketing they're actually doing, and maybe they've got other plans for the future. But so far, it hasn't really worked to that effect. Uh, it was the Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund that bought Newcastle last okay. year. So, I mean, they do hope to eventually like make some money, right? From no, Liv? not from Absolutely Liv. Not. They're really? not trying. To, they're not trying to it's make money. It's a soft off it. power move. It's like the U.S. exporting Hollywood to foreign countries. Yeah, but it's kind of weird because they're not. There are no big Saudi golfers that that are on this tour. It's people from America, Australia, Europe. It doesn't seem like it's doing a great job promoting they're, Saudi Arabia. They're purposely trying to find fo like foreign uh, players to play in it. So, so my big question that I've had recently about about the Live Tour is okay. It's a lot of money, right? They're they're offering somebody ninety million dollars, hundred million dollars to go play in what? How many tournaments, Avery? Is it? It's like eight tournaments. Yeah, it's not a lot. And you fly on that cool jet that they have, which they're looks like a yacht in the air yeah it's crazy it's an insane insane private plane what happens because they're not giving all the money up front it's not like okay phil mickelson here's 140 million dollars in a check if they send the first check over you get 20 percent. nice chunk of change to be sure for phil what happens if the second check is a couple days late what happens if if they don't pay you on time who are you talking to are you like hey uh, uh Mohammed bin Salman, can I can I get the rest of my money that you owe me? Like are you willing to have the balls to have that conversation? It just seems like if you're getting in bed with that type of money, it's there might be some strings attached. If they if they need a favor from you down the line and you're in their pocket for a hundred million dollars, you're probably gonna be uh very unlikely to say no to anything they, they ask you to do. But like what could a golfer do? I don't know. See there anything really. Like speak nicely about us yeah something like that but but also if they don't pay you your money on time are they do they have legal recourse what's going to happen with that it just it's a question that i think is worth asking if you're going to be taking a hundred million dollar contract to somebody there's no such thing as a free lunch there's probably going to be something uh in the details of it that you didn't expect to come the craziest thing is when we were in scotland there were all these pictures and we were at Presswick, which is like the place where they had the first ever open. And there's pictures of like open winners every year. And there's pictures with Tiger. There's pictures with Greg Norman in it. And it's like these guys have just completely not Tiger, but Greg Norman, like completely disgraced his name. Yeah. He's just he's just a nobody now for the PGA. Yeah. They're, they're like erasing them from history now. Yeah. Eventually, but, what's going to happen is there will be some sort of merger, I think, that comes into place because the PGA Tour can't lose big name golfers because they're saying that Cam Smith might join the live tour now and like guys that are in their prime right now leaving the PGA tour as it stands they're not allowed to compete is it a lifetime ban that's what they're saying yeah so at some point if you lose enough of your top golfers they're going the PGA is going to have to have some sort of reconciliation policy yeah I mean they've already lost a fifth of the top 100 players it's yeah. crazy yeah so there, there'll be There'll be some bargaining table event that happens once the PGA Tour loses. What do you think they're going to do, though? Allow them to compete in PGA Tour events as well. I think that you could it would be very easy for the PGA Tour to say, OK, uh, yeah, we overplayed our hand a little bit and we're going to allow you to still compete in PGA Tour events and live tour events and pick and choose which ones you want to do. I actually think that a lot of golfers would do both, right? 100%. Like, I don't think that they want to walk away from every PGA Tour event. No. I think that the money's just too good for them right now. If you give them the option to pick and choose what tour events you want to play, they're like, okay, we'll take we'll take 50% of Cam Smith as opposed to 0% of him playing on it. Absolutely. Tour. I mean, all these guys who are playing in the Open now, like it's a it's a coveted tournament. Everybody wants to play in it. They just want to have the option of playing less less tournaments. Yeah, like with how guaranteed much, money. How much do you think Cam Smith has made in his whole career? Because I saw the, the rumor was $90 million to Ooh. join Liv. Uh, so he won, what was it, like $2 million, two and a half million for the for the Open? Yeah, I think so. And that was his first major. He's been in the top five of a couple other majors. 
maybe my guess is 25 my guess is like somewhere 10 to 20 million probably less than that and so you're getting four times that at at least tough to say no to yeah i think it would be pretty so the Usyk joshua fight is happening over there yeah around the same time as the live tour uh i think it would be a good double coverage for uh something to happen if you need a foreign correspondent to go uh check out the live tour we've discussed this in part of my take and and billy it would immediately fall in love with the saudi regime they would they would butter you up so well he'd be like yo these guys are metal i mean if they start showing me all their tigers yeah that's the thing i mean i'm a sucker for that um i I did talk about this on today's part of my take but i want billy's feedback because i know you're really into falconry oh we should talk to large about falconry he used to used to own a falcon no fucking way yeah how did how did we miss we'll catch up with him on that because he's going to come back on um but there was a, a falconry event over the weekend. I forget where it was, but it was in front of a large crowd. And the guy brought out his falcon and was doing the whole demonstration. It was flying around. And the falcon started to fly away. And the guy was like waving his hand. He was on the mic. He's like, okay, now the falcon's going to go out. He's going to hit his waypoint. He's going to come back to where I direct him. And the falcon just peaced out. The falcon was just like, <laughs> fuck this. I'm done returning to this guy. I'm back to being a falcon again in the wild. <laughs> that happened at uh, one of, it was... It was the Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana, and oh, Air yeah. Force was playing. I think it was Georgia Tech, and they have they have a Falcon that they like send out, and the Falcon just left. Yeah, <laughs> and like the, while the game was going on, they were out looking for the Falcon. Falcons like peace, I'm out. Yeah, they can just decide to do that. You don't control yeah, the skies. You can't. Is. Air Force should have shot down the Falcon. They should have. <laughs> they should have scrambled a couple F-16s. Yeah. Put up. I don't know if you can get a radar lock with an AMRAM on a Falcon. I think you can. I think you can identify that. I think the the radar signal will be big enough. Falcons are what? Like, what's their wingspan? Five, I mean, it six on feet. The species. Usually, they always come back, just not when you want them. to. Yeah, Falcon has a radar signature. You could lock that thing up, maybe from like I don't know, ten miles in. Even wait, wait. You can rate. You can radar lock a organic. Yeah. If what? it has a radar signature, yeah, you can you can lock up. But a it's bird. an organic material. It can. You yeah. can see birds on your radar? Yeah. So the radar system, it's not like looking for electronics. It's looking for some, if it's an IR radar, then it's looking for heat signature, which probably wouldn't be big enough on a bird. I don't think it would pick up uh, the sun. It would pick up an afterburner on a jet, but I don't think it would pick up a bird. But if it's a radar lock, you could get a radar lock on a Falcon. Mm-hmm. That would be so cool if they sent up a fighter jet and it shot a missile at a bird. <laughs> Just blew it up. Uh, Arian, I, you were gone for a second, but I, I had a question that I asked these guys about the live tour and about the money that might be coming from it. Can you imagine if if you're Phil Mickelson and um, you get that first check from from the Saudi regime and then the second check is a little bit late? Like, do you, do you hit them up and you're like, hey, I noticed this hasn't hit my account yet. Like, that's the thing that I'd be worried about is like, you, first of all, the money's not like fully, fully guaranteed. It's not an established tour. Uh, and then secondly, if they pay you $150 million, they're probably going to want some sort of favor at some point from you, right? Holy wait. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably I mean, I guess it, it's, contractually, it's contractually obligated, but would it be the Saudi courts that, that you yeah, would have Sharia to go through? Law. Exactly. Yeah, I don't, so, I don't know how you would go well, about what if they declare bankruptcy because they are bankrupt because they're not trying to make money off of it the well, then I just, yeah. you, you just negotiate i would negotiate as much as you can in the front end yeah like, before i go over there give me a guarantee that I, that this is gonna hit the, the bank and if it don't hit then don't go but if it hits i think well let's say that they, they i will pay you 20 up front mm-hmm. oh bet <laughs> i know we're bouncing around topics uh but hunter biden n- this is so why does he take so many videos of himself doing that stuff so i figured it out a lot of those videos are the people he's with in order to get larger payouts uh like hush money and disappearance money will try to influence him to take those videos for hypothetically if there's some sort of uh like hush agreement those videos get them more money so like let's say oh no there isn't that much crack on the scale like oh take a video and send it to me like in in they try to argue like they'll try to get him in positions to pay out more money it, taking advantage of him while he's intoxicated and that's why there's so many videos of him like 
doing in some of those other videos are probably just him uh like just weird videos that you'd find on anybody's phone but uh i mean not all of them but like uh but he's influenced to take those videos because it gets he's being taken advantage of and can get more hush money that's what i've read up of like because why the hell is he taking so, so you think videos? he's he's dipping into he's paying himself hush money no no other so for example if you are one of the girls he's with in those videos and you're trying to get him to take videos of him doing illicit activity. And then if you have those videos, got it. you're then like, I'm going to release this video unless you pay me money. Got it. It's like for them, it's a sport to get them paid. He's being honey potted. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why there's all the videos. Okay. I need you to do more research on the Hunter Biden situation. Cause I think that like half the stuff that's coming out about him, it's, it's coming from 4chan now. 4chan said that they hacked all yeah, his devices. ICloud. So some of it is going to be fake. We know that with 4chan, like they like they love to fuck with people. Uh, some of it's definitely real for sure. Like the Wayne crack thing. I think that's real. I think a lot of the stuff that he puts out, like he's got he's got enough bad stuff where it probably doesn't need to be goose with like yeah. fake stuff. But I guarantee you 4chan is just like fucking with everybody and they're putting out fake stuff, too. Yeah. I mean, w which stuff do you think is fake? I haven't I haven't done a deep dive. But it's kind of set. I mean, when you look at it, the guy's definitely a big time addict who needs a lot of help and yeah. he's being taken advantage of. But that's, but like with saying that, like he, sh he shouldn't have anyway, whatever videos of him weighing crack. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. He, um, he shouldn't have that. Especially if you, weigh, if you weigh crack, don't, don't film it. This, that should be a general rule. If, if you weigh crack and do crack, I don't think you should have as much access as people do. But I mean, I don't, like he would definitely be kicked off major boards if he was a regular uh, person, but he's not. But anyway. All right. Uh, so we're going to get to large and we're going to talk about uh, Bernie Madoff. Large is a very interesting guy. He's dealing with some kidney stone issues as well um, that, that I've dealt with in the past, but his are significantly worse than mine. So we're going to talk to large about that. He's going to take us through the life of Bernie Madoff and his perspective from a guy that worked in finance for, some 30 years uh so he's a great guest we love large we'll have him back on too before we get to him uh he is brought to you by ebay ebay is changing the game once again for buying and selling sneakers online from rare dead stock to the latest release or even carefully loved pre-owned kicks when you buy with ebay's authenticity guarantee you can rest easy knowing that everything including the box they came in is a hundred percent legit my favorite pair of sneakers, I bought a pair of Penny 2s. They're uh, the Anthony Hardaway. I think they came out in like 93, 94. I wore them since I was a kid. Finally got my hands on them. They're some of my favorite sneakers. You can get shoes like that from eBay. And again, they have an authenticity guarantee. So you know that everything, including that box, is 100% real and legitimate. With millions of sellers across the globe, the drops never stop. eBay sneakers, check it out. Authenticity guaranteed. Billy, what's one pair of shoes that you've always wanted? Concords. Concords. Check yeah, it out. Jordan. Look, uh, look on eBay sneakers. See if you can find some. Their authenticity will be guaranteed. And now here's Large. I read Large's blog yesterday. Um, he's been going through a battle with his own penis, as, as have many of us. Um, his is one of the more gruesome battles that I've heard about. You really make my kidney stone experience seem like a walk in the park like i had fisher price my first kidney stone and you my friend you had you had a laser shot up your dick yeah yeah so um so yeah i had a laser in my cock um i i tell you what i'm i'm 50 right so you guys have a lot to uh to experience before you get to me i know you're all young men and ladies in here but i've had gout i've had multiple injuries i've had all this stuff i'm telling you this this kidney stone thing that hit me last week, PFT, I wouldn't I wouldn't wish it on Bernie Madoff. It is it was the worst. And so when I got to the hospital, I said, do whatever you need to do to get this out. And apparently all roads to my kidney stone uh, went directly through the hole in the tip of my penis. And it was a fucking it was a chore. The meat is sure. The, yeah, it went through the meat, which is such a brutal word for and right. it, it just means any opening, right? Yes, we have multiple meat meat. It's not me to side, by the way. We have multiple meat. your ear canal is one. Your nostrils are both meat. But the one that they want and some people, I think, pronounce it meatus. So we'll go. We'll go in the middle with it. Uh, the one they wanted was at the tip of, of my penis. And 
I had never thought that. Whenever I looked at the opening at the at in the hole mm-hmm. and on the head of my cock, I never thought of it as something that would be described as roomy, like maybe right. adorable. You know, <laughs> certainly sufficient, but uh-huh. never anything that was uh, accommodating. That I think uh, of all the meatuses on our body, <laughs> yeah. I feel like the the one on the penis is the only strictly out hole that right. there is. Yeah. So most meatuses have some sort of function some need to have have it become an in hole yeah the uh the cock tip that's an out hole yes i had i had written it was just strictly an exit up until that time for urine and thick childbearing <laughs> ropes of cum which people want to put on a t-shirt that absolutely nobody will wear but yeah. uh but yeah so until then they uh until this weekend that's what it was I just, i've never experimented in docking which I think uh-huh. is popular with some of the kids nowadays. I've never done anything of any kind. That's and not even like an in in hole. That's just like a you're just kissing me. I believe so. Point. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Um, so that's it. They went they went in hard. They went in with. Should I tell you or no? Yeah. Well, so Arian just Go. hopped on. Arian, welcome, welcome back to macrodosing. This is large. I don't know if you had the chance to meet him when you were in the office. Muted. Your your mic's off. My bad. Can you hear me now? Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. I was like, nah, but the first thing I hear is dick tips and stuff like that. That's the first. <laughs> yeah. What nice, up, dog? <laughs> nice, to, nice to meet you. Yeah. Dick. You're, you're going to get, get the full large experience today. So large spent uh, a, a good portion of his life on and around Wall Street. So he's he's a great person to talk about Bernie Madoff with. But on a personal level, he's recovering from a kidney stone. So we're just kind of we're setting the table with that. And what a lot of people don't realize is is how painful a kidney stone is. Mm. I didn't know what was going on with my own body. I was just, I, I had like back pain that started to get more localized in the bottom left part of my back. And then um, at some point when you start sweating from the pain, right. you realize, okay, this isn't gonna go away. I need to see a doctor about it. And for me, it was like, I, I had to get up in the middle of the night, probably five or six times to pee, couldn't pee. And the pain just got worse and worse and worse. And by the time it it becomes an issue, because people don't realize that, um, at least for me, the pain with the kidney stone wasn't peeing it out. It wasn't like going through my dick. The pain was when it was going from my kidney into my bladder, mm-hmm. because that's the smallest opening like in your body. Right. And so the, the pathway that the stone had to go through, even though I had a comparatively small kidney stone, um, that pathway was where it really got stuck for a little bit and got jammed up. And that was pain. Like the, the nurse in the hospital did tell me that it, she had one and that it was worse than giving birth, yeah. which I love to just remind women about every single time I, I discuss it. And they get so angry oh. when I say it. Uh, it's probably nowhere near as painful. Um, I will admit that, but at least one woman has told me that. So that's what I keep going with. I'm like, yes, I'm very tough. I've had multiple. I've been more, and I said to my doctor, I was like, Doc, am I a pussy with all this? He's like, I'm telling you, Mr. McCarthy, my real name, uh, where your blockage is. Because I had just over six millimeters, which isn't that big, but was blocking the ur- the ureter, mm-hmm. right? That little tube that comes out of kidney. So my whole kidney was shut down. My whole right kidney was shut down. And he's like, I had a woman who delivered twins naturally, and she had the same exact situation as you did, and she said it didn't uh, compare. I don't know if this woman had a very large meatus for a vagina where the kids just kind of walked mm-hmm. out. You know, I mean, every every labor is different, but it made me feel a hell of a lot better because. And here's the thing: they went up and they brought all these excavation tools through my cock and then up into my kidney, and where they did their their work, but they left a stent. So mm-hmm. here I am, like recovering and whatnot. On Thursday, I got to go back, and they got to take it out, and they're not putting me out. Like I was on propofol, I was on the stuff to kill Michael Jackson for the whole operation. Obviously, they're not putting me out to go back up and retrieve the shit that they left behind, and I find that to be unacceptable. <laughs> like yeah. I don't. I said I'm going to self medicate. You need to let me know if I'm just getting a local, and if it is just a local, I'll, I'll do some sort of drug there. You'll have to wait till it hits. Until you can then do your, because I'm more terrified of being put in the stirrups and having them go out and fish this mesh sleeve out at the base of my kidney at the beginning of my ureter, which is happening on Thursday. And people said, I'm only halfway home on this. The pain now that it's gone, believe me, I don't like the guys like I might be out of your whatever insurance thing. I was like, I'll pay cash for this. I don't give a fuck. This isn't yeah. money's not a thing with this. And uh, but I'm terrified. <laughs> terrified to go back on Thursday to get this fucking thing ripped out. 
of my penis. Quick question, Lars. Please. Do you know what type of kidney stones they are? Yeah, so Calcium? I have them. Yeah, so I have uric acid, like gout. My gout is uric acid, right? So my gout is because of my lifestyle. Am I drinking? Am I eating a prosciutto and all that stuff? You're a gourmand. I am. But the kidney stone is calcium, um, calcium oxalate, I think, which is, I was told that it was more of a hereditary thing. So my whole mom's family has it. My mom had something called a staghorn, which filled in every ventricle inside the kidney. And so they had to go inside, cut her open to take out a bag of sand. This is a lot of shit for you guys to digest, I know. So- it's hereditary of the kidney stone. Everything else that's wrong with me is because my diet and lack of exercise. Boom. I ain't gonna lie. When 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 uh when y'all first proposed this, I was like, that shit boring as fuck. But I was started looking into it. I was like, oh, this shit's interesting as hell. It is. So he had yeah. what was it seventeen billion dollars that he was managing somewhere around there? Yeah, I mean, that, yeah that, that number. Got, I saw sixties. That number got yeah. up to about sixty-eight and a half. Oh shit! Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, in in a sick way, I respect the hustle that went into him <laughs> pulling off this gigantic con because, like, this wasn't just your standard Ponzi scheme where you're taking investments from people and you're just you know paying them out the returns and hoping that nobody ever asks you for stuff. It got very, very. He had like full time employees working on falsifying computers. They were like writing their own fake software. Uh, to to keep this con going, and it, th- he would have kept going for it if the market hadn't crashed in like two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, there's a, also a lot of dominoes that you can draw from this. Like I know the Will Ponds were were heavily involved in this, which made them then have to sell the Mets eventually. And now Steve Cohen is running the team. He's probably going to make a bid on Juan Soto. So it's like the domino theory of like Bernie Madoff spends. 30 years or however long defrauding the American people. And then that leads to Juan Soto becoming a free agent or being traded to the Mets. Um, it's that breaks my heart. It breaks my heart, but uh, let, let's get into it. Or is there anything else you'd like to discuss related to your urinary tract situation? No, no, just thoughts and prayers. Uh, for do you want, wait, no, 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 no. We do thoughts or prayers. You can't have both. <laughs> yeah. I'll go prayers. Prayers. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'll the, go prayers. Yeah. You have enough thoughts. I do have a ton of thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> prayers is good. And tune in to Twisted History. Last thing on the kidney, <laughs> on the kidney stones. This is the fourth uh, iteration of someone getting kidney stones in the office. I don't know if there's correlation, but, or causation, but I've been looking into it. And I'm not sure if it's a common denominator from content creators or something in the water here. So it's the silent plague affecting bloggers. Yeah. Currently doing an investigation because I think I'm a prime candidate for getting kidney stones. You're doing an investigation. You are because of the supplements that you take. Yeah. But it, so it was me, Big Cat, Large. Who's the Dugs? Fl- Dugs. That's right. Dugs had one too. Is it contagious? Uh, if you dock hard enough, I think you can like suction out. It's like playing sucker blow with the tips I didn't know of your penis. You was, I, I didn't know you was out here docking, bro. <laughs> no, they're bad. They're bad. So I think mine was more related to sodium intake. Um, even though I, I think my dad did have a kidney stone, but mine was more related to sodium intake because I drink a lot of soup and eat a lot of soup. And I just, you know, I, I don't necessarily take care of everything that i'm putting into my body all the time also i was on billy supplements which i think had something to do with it that was way after i don't know i think it was like right no no, it was after was it because you were doing it really bad during my fight week because when i fought jose canseco that's during training that's when you had bad kidney stones okay i just like to blame you for everything you know yeah. how that goes i was about to say, I was about to say the, the, the doxing the the kidney stones we had to start questioning if billy's a net positive in your life man that's true i've been i've been thinking about that for years <laughs> <laughs> i've been doing that equation semi-weekly uh but yeah we do have the whole squad here so i'm pumped to have everybody back avery's back from scotland uh came back no kilt Wearing standard American dress. I'm kind of disappointed to see that. But yeah, I'm back. You are back officially. Happy to be back. So so let's get into Bernie Madoff. Uh Large, do you wanna do you wanna give any of your was it bona fides, bona fides? Talk about like your experience in the financial world, set the table. All right. So I I, I entered into the financial world world in nineteen ninety three. So the, just so people have a perspective of where I'm coming from. I got in there in ninety three, right after I got out of college. I was all set to go to Brooklyn Law School right out of college, and I deferred admission for one semester. And Brooklyn Law School is also the uh, school that Bernie Madoff was going to go to also. Little thing there. He went to Hofstra and then went to Alabama. He was going to Brooklyn Law, and he wound up not going. So we had similar paths as far as that goes. I was right down to the American Stock Exchange in 93, and I eventually wound up on the New York Stock Exchange. And then I went upstairs, and I was a position trader for like all these big banks 
over the course of 25 years. So when I first started, I was a listed stock guy, stuff that was listed on a stock exchange, IBM, Ford, all that kind of stuff, GE. There was always another stock exchange that didn't have a centralized marketplace, and that was called the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ. The NASDAQ was made out of thousands of market makers, people with turrets all over the place who are making markets in certain stocks. So if you wanted to buy a, you know, a thousand shares of Ford, you had to go to Post 5 at the New York Stock Exchange, go to the Ford specialist, ask for a market and buy a thousand shares. If you wanted to buy a thousand shares of Intel, you could go into this NASDAQ market maker Ether and interact with anybody who made markets. One of them was very well um, governed, listed stuff that I did. And one of them was the fucking Wild West. And that was the NASDAQ. Shit came down on NASDAQ guys and they put in rules. But before that, that place was the fucking Wild West. And the guy who ran the NASDAQ for a long time was Bernie Madoff yeah. before he started his thing. So right from there, he was a guy that knew how to steal in a way that was probably unethical, but was not yet illegal. Right. So that that's that's how I first was introduced to the dude. Okay. So before he started this investment scheme, his job was he was the chairman of NASDAQ. Yeah. And how did you get to that position? I feel like you have to you have to know where a few bodies are buried to even yeah, get so yourself he, elevated to there. So at when NASDAQ was starting, it started, like I said, with a bunch of individual market makers, and he became one of the biggest market makers within that structure. And so when they decided to sort of unify and make it one marketplace, again, not a centralized marketplace, it existed everywhere where people had turrets, they put Bernie at the head of it. And he did a very good job. It made a lot of money for a lot of people. Almost victimless crimes. Like people come in, I'll buy 10,000 of this. People would buy stock ahead of you, then flip it out to you like higher. Really, really insulting shit for a listed trader to see. But that was the type of wild, wild west that uh, the NASDAQ was. Okay. So he decided at some point it's time to go into business for myself. Yeah. So, he, you know, everybody who trades, trades with funds, people who take other people's money and runs them. That's what a fund is. You take somebody else's money and you run it. And you Hopefully you make some money for them. So Bernie had the idea to take people's money and to run it. And he had such a great reputation on Wall Street that people were giving him money hand over fist. I know a couple of people who had worked for him, and I'd spoke to one person last night, actually the guy's wife, and he said every time I met her, he, she was amazed how he would ask about her kids by name. Like he was a very charming son of a bitch. Just that type of thing where you wouldn't mind investing with him. Just a likable guy. Mm -hmm. Like even though now he's, he's dead, but even though now he's, you know, universally loathed, he was a likable guy and and relatively, not relatively, extraordinarily trustworthy. So people gave him money, gave him money to run, and he decided to do it as a scam. We'll never know what the what the what the like the long term of this scam was because he never got out. Right, he didn't get out until he got caught. But for the basics of it, if you don't mind me saying it, right? Yeah. So he would take money from somebody and say that they were going to invest. He was going to invest it. And then he'd take money from somebody else and say he was going to invest it. And what he did was he would create these fake reports on how your money was doing. But he was extremely smart. He liked to have your money make about 1% a month, about 12% a mm -hmm. year. And you can make up anything right here because he wasn't actually investing the money. So he was just taking all this money, putting it into a bank account, and then sending you fake uh, updates on how your money was doing, and you were seeing that your money was growing steadily uh, over time. So if you put a million dollars in, you're making ten thousand dollars a month. That's good. That's good performance. And you know, for for comparison, a guy like Ponzi, Charles Ponzi, who was like the originator of this shit back in the twenties, like he promised you fifty percent on your money or ninety five percent on your money, depending on how long you were. Yeah. There was another guy who was, I think he was called like his nickname was five hundred and twenty percent Wilson. Because he promised people 520%. That's a great nickname. Yeah. Forget. Yeah. So, yeah, I think he was like, a, I forget the, what the hell he was. But anyway, Bernie promised you 12% a year. That's realistic. If somebody said 12% to me, I'd be like, that. that's a guy that sounds like it's um, it's very high, mm -hmm. but it's attainable. Right. It's 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 not impressive. It was, 12%. It was Miller. It was 500% Miller. 520% Miller. 520. Yeah. 520 yeah. Miller. Yeah. But it's. It's not impressive, but it's impressive when he kept doing it. 
over the course of 20 years. Mm -hmm. Like everybody else's chart, no matter what you're talking about, athletic performance, you know, anything. Charts go up and down. There's like some ebbs and flows. His chart just steadily climbed 1% a month over the course of 20 years. And that was the key to it, right? Everyone was believable. And that's why I think I could do it. Yeah. I, I mean, I missed the boat. But I think I could have. I mean, I missed the boat. I could have done it very easily here. You could have done at Barstool. I just think there's so much new money in Barstool. If you said 12 percent, I think people would be like, yeah, that sounds good. Actually, no, I don't know if you could have now that I think about it, because I think that there's a lot of new money. You're right. Right. But I think that we're all so dumb uh, and speaking for myself included that I would see 12 percent and I'd be like, come on, 12 percent. That's that's rookie numbers. Like I, I want I would I would be more likely to fall right now for the guy that's like 50 percent a year. Easy, guaranteed. But that's the whole thing. Like, that's where I get you. And that's where Bernie gets you. His promise of 12%, of 10 to 12%, went for somebody saying, Well, I got a million to invest. I'll give you 500 grand and I'll put 500 grand into something a little bit more risky. And when that 500 grand, you wound up losing 30% on something risky, then whatever you had left, you threw it back into Bernie because mm -hmm. he was always there just grinding it out. So, how, how did he get started if you're looking to start? Uh, you know that you're going to start a scheme. Mm -hmm. I don't think he ever had an actual business plan. Maybe when he first came up with the concept of it, maybe he did think to himself, okay, I will invest it and I'll, I'll just become a, a standard hedge fund manager. Um, but then when once he got the money, he just put it like directly into his own bank account, like into a savings account and, and just took everybody's money, put it in there. Did he pay back any of the original investors? Yeah, So uh, so you mentioned 2008. 2008, the market had turned over, right? So that was what we had just recently seen at the beginning of this latest recession. So we had something similar with the market correcting itself in 2008. And that's when people started to head for the hills, start taking out money um, just to put it elsewhere, just to pay bills, just to do whatever. And that's when the um, that's when the, the sheet was pulled off of this whole fucking uh, circus. So if that didn't happen, he would have kept going unless he had some sort of threshold. Like I would think, that if I started with you, th there's so many kids in this 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 uh, company who said, "Large, if I gave you ten grand, would you invest it for me?" I just don't know what to because nobody knows what to nobody knows anything about investing here, mm -hmm. right? I mean, does anyone here know anything about investing? A little. Billy's gonna act okay. like he does. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, I think for the most part, the the, the majority <laughs> of people just do not. Billy, so, wait, wait, tell me what you what you would what do. do. You know, uh, I would. Do more stable assets. There's a 70, uh, thir a 70, 20, 10 split on like bonds, stocks, and other things. You would just put it all in Cum Rocket. You put it in, in no, the I'm, I'm not a, I, I'm not believing in crypto rocket, in crypto type stuff. You're not activated. Your eyes aren't in lasers. Like, like Bitcoin is one thing, but all the other coins are just scams. I think I feel like Bitcoin is the more stable just because it's more widely used, yeah. but it's it's definitely it was like not the first. Stable. It's like it was like the first one, wasn't it? You cannot, yeah, yeah. You can. It's, it was definitely one of the first, if not the first, uh, crypto coin. But you can you can use Bitcoin for transactions at some places. It's probably not as many anymore. I think Putin created it. That's okay. for later. All right, I like that. I like that, Arian. When you were uh, when you were in the league and people were getting contracts, I you always hear the. The horror stories about people that decide to trust uh, their money with a friend or somebody that's a friend of a friend that was referred to you. Um, what what did you did you have like a bunch of shady people approach you for investments and like how did you decide what to do with your money? <clears throat> um, I I honestly I tell people all the time I just got lucky because I I I got taught like, like if if your financial advisor I this is the advice I give young cats if your financial advisor isn't as transparent as possible one and two teaching you while uh they're um while you're paying them to watch your money then there's probably something shady going on i've met so many like financial advisors or wealth managers or whatever the case may be that are just sharks man they just sharks and they'll penny they'll they'll, they'll take take little off the top here little off the top here and you got a hundred clients all of a sudden you have a, a great business i know dudes that have gotten got for hundreds of thousands of dollars i know it's just it's just gross man so i think the 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 advice i give like cats is like i just said is to make sure that you understand what's going on because <clears throat> part of the issue is i've said this plenty of times but part of the issue is the it's the it's the regular the regulatory um oversight there just really isn't any when it comes to 
um, these the, the athletes, just athletes and, and people in general, right? Uh, because if you ha- if you don't have anybody like overseeing it, then any kind of nefarious characters can get in the mix, and and we didn't go to school for money. I didn't go to school for money, right? People go to school to study this, to study markets, to study the ups, the downs, the how to invest, like all of that. People go to school for that shit, and so all of a sudden you're coming out of college or you get a job, and all of a sudden you have hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars. You don't know what the fuck to do, right? And so it's 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 wise to 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 try to learn it the best you can. And and I I, I would like I said I was lucky, but this dude was just extremely ethical. And like he hires out uh, he outsources um, a firm to um, what's it called to audit. So mm-hmm. they get, they self audit themselves every year, right? To give all their clients transparency to let them know everything that they're doing is good. And any question you ask, any book, it's it's, it's all there for you to, for you to see. And and too many people don't don't do that and i think that's the the biggest thing but i see it all the time to answer your question in a long in a long way yeah like vince young i know got fucked over on that there are a lot of athletes that get screwed over and it's usually a friend that does it who, who might there was, not there was, how to do it bro there was one dude that i i had we had went to drink we had went we had, had some drinks with this cat and um he's he had got super loaded and and he's got so f- drunk that he started being honest. And he was like, man, these athletes are just so dumb. He's like, you could just take a little here, take a little here. You start, I'm like, bro, what the fuck is wrong? I was like, I, I started like cussing him. And I was like, bro, get, let, me, let me get out of here for I'm about to beat his ass. Like, I was mm-hmm. about to fight him. Cause like, he's just like started admitting he was stealing from people. Like it was, it was weird dog. But like, that's how these dudes think they sharks. Yeah. That it's funny that you mentioned that story because when I was reading up on Bernie and by reading, I mean, listening to numerous podcasts about him, which is the same that counts as we, reading. We, we established that, that yeah. audio, audio books is reading. I was reading about Bernie Madoff and I kept thinking to myself, if you're Bernie and you're doing this over the course of decades, it's the guilt has to eat away at you somehow. It's gotta be, you have to be thinking about it always in the back of your head that you're fucking up. And so if you, if you have a couple of drinks, like, you might admit it to somebody because in a way you, you might want to get caught because your life is just so stressful having to keep up this charade for so many years. Sounds like maybe that's what that dude was going through. He's got like he had to admit it to you, uh, even though he was he was drunk. He just had to get it off his chest to somebody. Maybe the case, man. But I mean, it's I, fucked I, up. I, I, it is. It is fucked up because like like so many people are affected that you don't see. Right. And that's the dude. Um, that, that that caught on to all of this with Bernie, like Harry Mar- Mar- Marco Pocalis or whatever, right? He was the one. He was like the whistleblower. He was the one. He wrote books about it and stuff. But for, for, so I was reading up on, I'm really reading up on it, those like mm-hmm. words. Um, and he was, and he was, <laughs> he was, he was saying how he blew the whistle on this like in '99, and nobody at the SEC was listening. Like, yeah, like, and so like it, it called into the question. He started. He, he even put into place like things that the SEC needed to change, which for people that know the SEC is the uh, S- Securities Exchange Commission. And so like he was saying like people like it's rampant. It happens all the time. And the SEC turns a blind eye and the government turns a blind eye to a lot of these cats. And he's like white collar crime is probably the most prevalent thing that we need to be paying attention and not trying to lock up all these petty, uh, petty crimes with all these criminals. He's like, that's not what you need to worry about. It's people robbing people of pensions health insurance benefits funds losing jobs like all this he's like this is the most important thing um uh, big t what's your investment strategy how many how many mayonnaise jars i uh i just have my 401k i have no idea how that works i have no idea what goes into it i just put money in it and then i see that uh thanks to joe it goes down every time brandon thanks to brandon yeah yeah legit investment advice for someone young who uh, like really Billy is not a, a financial advisor but seriously look into a Roth <laughs> IRA because uh the taxes you pay it's untaxed and your taxes are probably lower now and when you take that money out one day from a Roth IRA if you're like not you're not going to be making you hopefully you'll be making more and be in a different tax bracket by the time you take it out so you want to pay the lower taxes now you can put up to 6k in a year if you're under a certain earning threshold and I, it's honestly been a really good uh, device for young people and more people should know about it. Billy, are you a financial advisor? No, okay. but I'm just telling people about a Roth IRA isn't like I know telling I... people to invest in the Vanguard for split it between the Vanguard foreign uh, sector and domestic sector 3K each. That would be an investment strategy. Right. I'm just covering our bases by asking you again. Are you a financial advisor? No. Okay. 
That should cover it, right, Lars? One hundred percent. Yeah, I, I, I'll, <laughs> I'll reiterate too. But I think you know, from Arian's point, like I, I spoke with that guy David Meltzer once, a couple of times. He's a billionaire guy. He bought a ski slope and a golf course in the same week, and he deals with a lot of athletes and a lot of celebrities. And they deal with athletes and celebrities and people who, in general, who are just very hardworking and successful. Is that they don't like to ask for help. So Arian's yeah. a little bit extraordinary in that way. That. On top of hiring a guy, he wants to learn exactly what's going on. But for the most part, people are like, okay, you do that. You yeah. do that for me. Like Shaq's one of the like outliers who kind of gets in the weeds with all that stuff. And that's why he's one of the more successful businessmen, ex-athletes in the history of the world, perhaps. But in general- He also does every single commercial. 100%. But in general, I think professional, no. <laughs> professional athletes are low-hanging fruit for people yeah. who know just a little bit about it. Like again, if I went around and I said to Big T- well, if you have 10 grand burning a hole, I'll take it from you. And I could easily give him something at the end of every month showing him what I did with it when I didn't do anything. Yeah. And sooner or later, Dave would give me a million dollars. <laughs> and sooner or later, Penn would give me a little bit. And then sooner or later, Dave would see that he's making $10,000 a, a month. And so that number will probably get to 50. And then I would then head to you know, New Zealand and live where the hobbits do. Mm -hmm. Like I would get the fuck out. It's, it's so much easier to do regulatory or not, then people would expect. It's just that this guy had done it and it got so exponentially huge that there probably was no place in the world that he could have hit. Right. You know, because people do this all the time and then just get the fuck out of Dodge. Let's get 10 from a, let's get a mil, a, and let's get out of here at 25 million, sweetheart. Pack the bags. Yeah. This guy is now $64 billion. Where the fuck do you go? So, so when he first got, got started, was he hitting up his friends? No, all his friends were high net worth individuals, high yeah. net worth individuals or people that he's dealt with. And then that went from being his friends. And this is where it becomes tragic, because maybe you don't feel bad about fucking over a guy who made a lot of money playing in the NFL. And you should because he's a human. But fu the, the, the pension plans mm -hmm. and the individuals who could no longer retire that you see them, you know, go into all of a sudden that old age home that doesn't have the two ply toilet paper mm -hmm. because of what had happened with all their money being burned. It's not Kevin Bacon or um, the you know, IOC International <laughs> Olympic Committee. Yeah. Well, or they Steven Spielberg. Yeah. That the, doesn't break your heart. The IOC probably deserved it. Yeah. That's that's like if you defraud a fraud, mm -hmm. I think you're you're like Batman yeah. in that case. You're a silent protector. But it got so big that in order to, to start paying off the returns, the pool just has to keep growing and you take the money wherever whoever the biggest fish are that you can find because it, it just kind of extends. You hit the reset button. You're like, okay, I can get away with this for another year. And then I don't even think he had an exit plan. I think he was just like, uh, I'm just going to keep getting bigger until I eventually get caught. He also had legitimate businesses. Like he had legitimate trading desks and stuff that operated under a different p &L, And all they had to do was break even. Yeah. And that put up enough of a guys that no one, for some reason, no one could see through until, as Arian said, Harry Mercopolis, you know, this one Greek dude mm -hmm. who was a competitor of Bernie. The only reason he looked into Madoff stuff is because Bernie was doing it better than him. So he was like, fuck this guy. He must be insider trade. That was the thing. He must be insider trading. Somebody must be giving him something before it happens. Like Pelosi's husband is doing now. Mm -hmm. Buying NVIDIA before, you know, some of this funding may go to the chip makers. He must be fucking insider trading. And so that's what they went after him for whenever they would investigate him. And they could never find any insider trading because there was no trading at all. Yeah. He wasn't fucking trading. <laughs> you know, it's 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 mind blowing. Yeah. So um, let, let's back up real quick Go. and talk about the history of the Ponzi scheme, because Billy did some research. I'm very excited to hear this about uh, Ponzi, about Ponzi himself. Right. Well, Ponzi was an Italian. Uh, Say no more. Italy. Got it. Yeah. OK. <laughs> not, a pervert, <laughs> not a pervert. Not a pervert. An Italian. Uh, so Ponzi, uh, <laughs> that's an inside joke. It's, yeah, it's, it's a long <laughs> oh. story. Like when, <laughs> like when, when uh, that's not really that long of a story. When, when, um, uh, Cuomo got in trouble for being too handsy and, and groping mm. people, uh, the, the watermark that came on the screen was when he was given his big defensive press conference was, I'm not perverted. I'm just Italian. Cause he was saying he, you know, he likes to grab and touch. <laughs> I, yeah, and, I remember that. And okay. so you got to make a distinction. Are you perverted or Italian? Sometimes it can be both. <laughs> um, so Ponzi, the scale of Ponzi's scheme was much smaller than Madoff's. It was uh, 20 million in 1920, uh, 
approximately 199 million in 2021 dollars. Um, so even pale. Like, Why didn't you say approximately 200 million? Why did you say approximately 100? Yeah, because I put 199 hard. 199. Give or take 1 it's million. 22. It's coming up. I put the 20 million into like a inflation calculator, okay. and I got 199. And it's I didn't take off, that extra way. step. It's like 270 million in today's dollars. It is. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Crazy. Well, yeah, the new inflation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, but um, so he was in so Italy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So he was even wrong about that. One hundred percent. Well, I I think it was 2021. They haven't calculated right, right. 2022. Yeah. A lot's yeah. happened, right? Yeah. I mean, we're fucking. I forgot about yeah. The numbers haven't come out yet. Yeah, it's fucking we're waiting on the orange juice yeah. concentrate yeah, market. Yeah. <laughs> no, so he basically went to school with a bunch of rich individuals in Italy. Uh, he was not very uh, rich to begin with. He didn't come from a rich family, but he was trotting around Rome with his University of Rome friends who were very highly esteemed Italian individuals. Uh, he ended up partying them with them too much and had to drop out of school. Went over to the U.S. because he saw a bunch of Italian men coming back from the U.S. rich. He was poor. Uh, went there. He first landed in Boston and started in the Postal Service and figured out some sort of scheme to buy uh, postal futures to sell to people in order to get returns and uh, get you know do what Madoff was doing, but that didn't exactly work. He just ended up taking people's money and running a Ponzi scheme, you know, pay, not paying people back any principal, solely just using other people's principles to pay uh, old investors with new investors' money. Uh, he then did this scheme from Boston to New York to Canada, Montreal, and other places he landed. In all these places, he worked as uh, in the banking system a little before he decided to create this scheme. Uh, he had a vast network like Madoff, but the thing with his scheme is in order for him to have been getting the returns he was getting, he would have been having to buy Titanic ship boatloads of these postal documents that were supposed to give like a bond return. And the amount in circulation of those postal documents and bonds was way less than he would have had to have bought, bought to make those returns and it was several like the physical paper would have had to been several titanic boatloads full so in the end he got caught he got imprisoned uh sent to prison for three years because of a federal investigation and then he was sent back to prison after he got out from the federal terms because of massachusetts state uh, uh accusations which he tried to try in double jeopardy he lost ended up getting deported to italy uh, where he then went to Brazil to a, start a new life um, to work for. He ended up working for Italian airline, and he died in 1941 after his airline was shut down when Italy went from the Axis to the Allies. Crazy. So it's he he gets the name for the Ponzi scheme, but it was that guy five twenty percent Miller who actually did it. It sounds like so, a great beer, by the way. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I'm, I'm gonna have one. I'm gonna yeah. be fucked up. <laughs> but Ponzi, if you're choosing something that that would be named after you, I feel like a scheme is actually kind of cool to have a scheme named after you. Mm. It's better than an airport. The Billy scheme. The Billy, yeah. No, nobody would ever fall for the Billy scheme. Have <laughs> <laughs> maybe you have. No, no, no. no. Yeah, actually, no, no. You got you got kidney stones, man. You I, did already. Yeah, we've all fallen for the Billy scheme. <laughs> they have. No, um, but what I found so interesting about um, Madoff was his scheme to recruit new investors. So his areas of you know socializing, he had um, he used his sons. From what I understand, he had both sons who both ran two different charitable organizations, and these charitable organizations attracted wealthy individuals who wanted to not only do good and you know be charitable, but also probably you know get some tax returns off of large donations. These type of individuals who are giving donations to uh, his, one of his sons did have a uh, lymphoma and he started this charity to sort of, uh, you know, keep him busy as someone who didn't really have to work because his parents were so quote unquote wealthy. So he was just there and they used these um, networks of people donating these uh Ch charities to then collect more people because these people who were willing to give money to charities had tons more money they would give to make more money. So 
that was the network in of expansion. And plus he was parts of various uh, charitable Jewish groups where he found tons of, uh, and that's sort of why everyone thinks Madoff was so evil because he didn't just rip off you know, random people, other rich people. He went after people he knew, people in as quote unquote someone, people of the tribe, and which caused huge uh, ripples in that community. Mm-hmm. So he, uh, so he, he gets his start. He he recruits his wealthy donor base, and he's like, okay, I'm going to give you solid, an honest day's return, and not promising the world. And he gets away with it for a long time. And the links that he went to to uh, to make it seem like it was an a actual successful operation are fascinating to me because you can't, it wasn't just like printing off fake reports that he would mail off to people. A lot of financial advisors have done that where mm-hmm. they, where they embezzle money from their clients and then they just print something up. They like do a Photoshop or they create something on their computer. So it looks like an actual document. And then they mail those out to their clients. That happens pretty frequently. Um, and what you're supposed to do, and Arian kind of touched on this is, you're supposed to have all of your funds audited and then show those to your clients to demonstrate, okay, the money is where I say that it is. And as we kind of, we need to do an episode on Enron on this show. Mad Dog's a big fan of Enron, by the way. She doesn't know. I (laughs) I just really like their logo. I don't know. I had to learn on this show what it even was, but I really like their logo. So it was an energy stock primarily. And I traded utilities for 10 years. So it like set prices. So I traded Enron. You like when any, you like, think about when I traded Enron, I traded Tyco when Kozlowski was in like Mykonos drinking vodka out of an icy David's dick for his wife's, yeah. you know, birthday party and buying $15,000 umbrella stands. It was a really interesting time when I was trading these fucking pigs and people were losing, you know, because that stock went from $90 to 36 cents. Oh, While I was watching, it fell off my board. Like I couldn't even trade anymore. Went to the pink sheet guys, these Italian guys with the zipper heads and the shoes. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so it was one of those. It was it was some time to be alive when all this shit was happening. Yeah, and yeah. they they had Arthur Anderson auditing Enron, but I think Enron was such a big client of Arthur Anderson mm-hmm. that it was worth Arthur Anderson's time and and headache to like just completely help them cheat. Right, Arthur Anderson has existed since. At probably 1910 or something like that. And everyone, when I was getting out of college, knew about the big five. You went to work for one of the big five accounting firms, Arthur Anderson, KPMG, Price Waterhouse, whatever they were. Ernst and Young. And now there's four because of Enron. Enron took down Arthur Anderson on top of taking down its own company, on top of taking down thousands of you know, employees and millions of investors and tens of billions of dollars. I mean, smartest man in the room, I think, is the, nobody does a better job than that fucking documentary. Mm-hmm. But it was stunning to watch the skilling and lay go through that and get on TV and say that everything was OK, knowing now what we know and me watching earning calls and seeing these jerk offs get up there and blatantly lie like that. We'll have you stunning. on. We'll have you on. We'll do a full episode on Enron at some point in the future, because I think that that merits like its own yeah. its own deep dive on it. Also, if you happen to have any shirts from theirs from like 1999 that you were willing to give up, I would oh, love an like Enron shirt. Okay. Yeah, Mad Dog absolutely loves She's an Enron stamp. <laughs> old Enron merch. Yeah. yeah. So so usually you have a company like an Arthur Anderson or, or another accounting firm that, that audits your shit and makes sure that it's all legit. Mm-hmm. And usually that's a pretty good safeguard. In, in Madoff's case, what he ended up doing, it wasn't just printing up photoshops. He had... Uh, several employees of his. There were so he had a, a setup where um, the 18th floor that was the legit operation, right? Mm-hmm. In the lipstick building, I think. And then the 17th floor, that's where his trusted people that were in on the scam worked. And some of the stuff they would do, they created a software system where uh, somebody could ask at any given time, like, show me m- my returns from last year and show me the exact trades that went into getting me the return that you gave me. And he would be able to plug in the amount of money that he paid them, their names and the window that they were looking at. And he had a software system that would go back and look at the prices of stocks and futures and all that stuff and figure out a way to like um, reverse engineer how they got to that exact return. Script. It would, yeah, it was a script. So, it's so detailed. Yeah. It's, it's, it's probably more work. They're just doing it regularly. Right. Yeah, I think it might be. 
because except I, it was billions. Like if he was doing yeah, this yeah. just to get ten grand out of Big T, he's an asshole. Yeah, but this is billions, yeah. man. Actually, I kind of want to yeah. do that. Just like, <laughs> I would want to too. Yeah, just like, ah. yeah. He he developed what probably could have been a, a pretty successful trading platform, mm -hmm. um, just all in the service of, of making it look like he was good at trading. Right. <laughs> so, do you know? I didn't. So there were people who worked for his company who had no idea they were working like on real shit, and they didn't know that there was a whole scheme going. One hundred percent. Yeah. So what percentage of the people were that, and what percentage did he trust to work on the scam? Do you know that? I, I mean, I don't think that it's known because a lot of people weren't prosecuted, but I would say it's a very small percentage of people were in the boiler room yeah. on 17. I think it was a handful. Yeah. So I would say like three to six people. So like the well, overwhelming majority of people who worked at that company were doing like real stuff and had no idea what was going on. Yep. Yeah. Right. They think that the family knew and the two sons who sort of worked there, the wife, they so unfortunately there was a lot of suicides and suicide attempts after this i think one of the sons committed suicide and ruth madoff the wife uh said that her and madoff when it was all going down had a pact to commit suicide on december 24th 2009 yeah they both they they attempted suicide together before he went to prison it's a week yeah. attempt, though. it was a week they, they yeah. took like an ambien and a clonopin i think <laughs> right and then probably just christmas full. eve yeah probably just got a great night's sleep i'm taking <laughs> that when they go i'm taking that on thursday when they try to go out it, that's right know, it's my dick again. it's a weak attempt it was just to sway the jury that they felt sorry. yeah it was a fraudulent attempt <laughs> but i think his sister and his brother-in-law also had a murder suicide pact there's a bunch of there's a bunch yeah. of suicide in and around the one son legitimately died of cancer you know the Wait, other the right. one son died of cancer. The yeah. guy that you'd mentioned before. The other son killed himself. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, Ruth, when they, <laughs> when the attempt didn't work out, she just dyed her hair red and stopped answering to the name Ruth. <laughs> um, so, you know, yeah. perhaps there was something. But for, for Big T's thing, you can't have that many people know. So it was a, you know, a real cabal, a real. Like, yeah, you know, I just didn't net. know that there was a whole company that was doing stuff legit. Yeah, the story that I, I heard. I thought it would have been a small operation. The story that I heard was. Um, there were there were two developers that were tasked with writing a script that was blatantly trying to fool the SEC with something. And they they showed it to Bernie and they're like, why are you asking us to do this? And then Bernie essentially offered them gigantic raises. And it's like, you guys need to be my people on the inside. Do you want this assignment? And they said, add another zero to it and then we'll talk. And so they were just bought off. And so, yeah, they were they were all about you know, pulling whatever advanced technological steps they could to fool the SEC. So that guy, um, Markopoulos. Yeah. Is that the guy's name? So, right. yeah, I, I had read um, through my ears that he was uh, he was a quant at like a rival firm mm -hmm. and a quant. That's just a nerd. Yeah. If you saw him, he's, he's a swirly type guy yeah, okay. he, he, and just very good at math. And, and he was tasked with creating a portfolio or not a portfolio, but a system that could rival Bernie Madoff's returns. Mm -hmm. And when he dove into it, he saw mathematically it's impossible to give the returns consistently that he's been getting because it was like a straight line. He's like, there's no trades in the world that could happen legitimately to make this uh, as successful as it has been. So he, I think he said like, there's a few different outcomes that, that we could uncover here. One is he's getting tipped off, like you said, mm -hmm. like it's insider trading. Um, two, it's a massive, massive fraud. Um, the likes of which that we haven't seen, like it's it's the biggest Ponzi scheme of all time. Or three, he's just that incredibly good, and everybody alive should give all their money to him because it's it's unreal how good this guy is. It it echoes what he said with Ponzi. If Ponzi was to have sold that many postal scripts that he thought he did, they didn't exist. That many post that many postage stamps didn't exist at the time that Ponzi would have had to have sold. And the same thing, once they did a deep dive on just his trading practices, that many shares of stock didn't trade on the stock exchange the day that he said that he had sold and bought. And so, so he was doing stuff that was, and the reason being is because Markopoulos went after the numbers and that's how he found it, but he also had a trader's mind. Before that, it was all SEC investigators and I've been under SEC investigation, which I think is one of the reasons why you have me here. Like, So I've been under investigation by FINRA and by the SEC. And so if you go on a broker check, you can look up my name and you'll see a red dot for the time where I was being investigated. I have a couple of NDAs I signed, so I can't get into too much. 
But I'll tell you, I sat down and I was grilled by SEC lawyers for five hours by myself without representation. Five lawyers on one side of the table and me on the other and fucking morons. Legal geniuses trading zeros. Yeah. And I think that's the whole thing. When a guy like a slick looking guy like Madoff had got in front of SEC guys, big time lawyers, he was able to legitimately sweet talk his way out of billions of dollars worth of fraud. Yeah, he would yeah. say he would uh, explain to them very intricate movements that he was making with the money and they had no idea what any of these things were yeah. because like you said they're lawyers or they're like maybe a former prosecutor or something like that but they don't know how stocks are traded right. they don't know how money is is moved around in wall street i was found innocent on everything okay way, good, yeah, good yeah. to know yep um who'd you throw under the bus nobody yeah no, no <laughs> there. you didn't rat anybody out of the, no no i'm well, no what, snitch what, <laughs> i'm no snitch what were you what were you under investigation for if you don't so, mind yeah, absolutely yeah so there's a couple of things that you can be under investigation for when you're a uh, block trader. The thing that I was, I don't even know if I can talk about it. Was it, th does anyone listen to this? No. Okay. It was a thing called over advertising. <laughs> so sometimes when you were on the floor, when you were on a desk trading a stock and I was told I need to trade anything on my pad. I was a utility trader at the time. So Duke Energy, D-U-K, I need to trade this thing. How do I start to trade it? Well, I can advertise that I traded a million shares of that thing and everyone would be like, holy shit. Large at Citigroup just ad, uh, traded a million shares. Let's see what he's doing. They'd make a call. They'd be like, what do you do? I'd be like, oh, I've been trading a million shares back and forth. What do you need to do? I need to buy 100 grand. Oh, you're done right here. I'll sell them to you and let's trade around it. I lied mm -hmm. and I got a foot in the door and that's the way that I was able to start doing commissionable business. At the end of the day, if Duke Power traded 5 million shares a day, it would look at the advertisings and there was 15 million shares advertised because everybody was fucking doing it, including me. So when the shit hit the fan and all of a sudden that became something that was no longer, uh, you know, allowable or something that you can look over, I got a pretty big investigation, like to the point where, you know, the fines that were being thrown around were uh, the type of stuff that could have ended me. But at, at the time, it wasn't illegal. Uh, you know, it was it was um, no, it was illegal, but it wasn't enforced. Got it. The, that's probably fair to say it wasn't enforced, wasn't overly immoral. I don't know where the victim on that crime goes. I hate to say victimless crime because somebody got fucked. The other company that should have been doing my business instead of me when I lied got fucked. Mm -hmm. So it's not a victimless crime. Um, but that's it. So they had to go and do hours upon hours of looking over tapes of where I traded this and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, working on the stock exchange, I've had multiple specialist friends who have been under SEC investigation for front running. A thousand shares comes in to buy. You grab a thousand before it at a quarter and you sell it to them at three eighths, like just front running and stuff like that. And this is happening within seconds, blinks of an eye. So like they're going in trying to read this. It's like reading the fucking matrix. So it's easy to talk your way around SEC investigators because they don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah. They're, so, they're not so, traders. They're lawyers. Right. Yeah. So so I, I this is fascinating to me because oh. How much so so little stuff like that, right? You say where it's illegal, but it's not enforced. Mm -hmm. Um, another the front running thing, right? Where it's like you have to know the market intricately and you know, on a almost a day to day your trading basis to even catch it, right? Mm -hmm. How much stuff like that would you say is going on that maybe not illegal, maybe not you know directly fucking people over, but you know it's immoral. How, how much would you say that is going on on a day-to-day -day basis on Wall Street? I can tell you right now that between 1993, when I started doing it, when I was on the floor of the American Stock Exchange, I should have wore a fucking mask, Aaron. I, I was an absolute thief. Like, there were no... That was the wild, wild west. And yeah. how it is today, you know, if, you know, at 2022, it's exponentially better. But still, people have found ways to skirt that issue, and they're probably... 20% of the profits that are made are made kind of on that fringe. Whereas before that, closer to the, you know, 2000, 93 into 2000, I would say that probably, well, that's when people were making big money too. I would say if you weren't cheating, you weren't trying and probably over 50% of the people were doing something that again, danced along that fringe. So it's gotten better, but it still exists nowhere near how it exists when I first started. So when, when he's under investigation initially, mm -hmm. after Markopoulos delivers his report or, or notifies the right people, um, they're asking him all these questions. I read one story where he, he, print, he has like the people on the floor beneath him on the 17th floor while he's in this meeting. He asks them, okay, give me 
uh, a specific trade or a specific client that you want to see documentation from. And I'll go get their papers from, you know, years ago. And so they give him some examples. He sends it down to the 17th floor. They print up like a 50 page stack of papers. They then hand wrinkle the papers to make them look like they're old, right. like they weren't just printed up. And then what do what do papers feel like when they come out of the printer? Hot. They're hot, right? So they put the papers in a refrigerator That's awesome. for about like three to five minutes, cool them down, and then bring the stack upstairs, hand them to the SEC investigators, and they look through. They're like, okay, this all seems legit. It's Breaking Bad. It's Holy Ozark. It's all, shit. Remember, it's all that. Yeah. Remember like in middle school or lower school where you had to, uh, elementary school, you had to like take tea and dip the, the paper in the tea to make it look like really, really old. Yeah. To make it look like it was written on parchment, yeah. like it's from the 1700s. Like dabbing it with tea bags. I did that one time and I dabbed this paper that I wrote with, with the tea bags. And then I said, okay, I want to make it look like super old and, and like almost tribal. So then I lit the corners of it on fire, <laughs> like Jerry trying to light a hundred dollar bill. And I just ended up burning half the paper and it got rid of like most of my words. And I turned it in. My teacher was like, this sucks. Where did you get <laughs> fire? Um, from the gods. <laughs> Prometheus. What do you mean? Where did I, I, my, my parents gave me a matchbook. Oh, this was like at home. Yeah, this is at home. Got not it. not in so, school. Got it. Where did you get fire? fire? <laughs> well, I was envisioning him in a classroom lighting a match. I, I, yeah, I didn't think y'all had those. But. We should try to pull off a scam. Yeah, what scam nope. would you want to pull off? Like, no, not, we like, shouldn't. A victimless yes, scam. Yes, let him, let him keep going. Billy should be in charge of this. No, like, like a victimless <laughs> scam where we like make... I don't. <laughs> I don't know that there is such thing. There is. Like, why don't we just trick the whole office into like, like, like Tommy did a scam by inviting us all to that party that didn't really exist and sucked. So there were victims. Yeah, I don't know. Something fun, just to like exercise our minds. Just a fun scam, just to yeah. get it out of your system. Yeah. Yo, Billy. You're a murderer, bro. What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> I, no, just to exercise. Like, the you want to scam thing. people to exercise know, your mind, just bro? Like, go touch grass. Man. I haven't what are you done. Talking about? I haven't done a lot in a month, and I'm trying. And now I'm like thinking. Go outside. Things. Go outside and meet people. I I was. <laughs> I think. Uh, I think we are pulling a scam. I think. I think our jobs are kind of a scam. Yeah. It, it's kind of nuts. Yeah. I don't know, Billy. Billy I like where your head's at. I want you to think of a scam that we could pull off. Yeah, just something that, like, not anything crazy. Well, so for example, back in uh, I forget the years that that this happened, in, but it was in the Netherlands. They had um, the orchid. Was it the orchid craze or the tulip craze? Tulips. Tulip craze. Yeah. yeah, people just thought the tulips were worth a shitload of money, mm -hmm. and so they became. It was almost like the crypto of of back in the day. The bulbs. Yeah, so it, it became almost like a, a an investment to own tulips and like rare tulips which is uh we could do something like that with frogs billy we could if you just figure out a way to make frogs really valuable you would be the, the richest man in all the land could be what did you think of our top top five frog list uh, i was mid tree frog number one you agree with that it was mid that's mid give me your top five frogs uh goliath frog is this from one to five or five to one uh one to five Goliath frog, African bullfrog, American bullfrog. Um, then I'm going to go with Ornit Pac-Man frog. And then I'm going to go with number five, Budget's frog. Budget's frog. Yeah, you better look that one up. That one's a I'm looking frog. up the Pac-Man frog first. Ornate. Oh, that, yeah, that's a good frog. The ornate. Well, look up African bullfrog. The Argentine horn frog is another name for the or ornate Pac-Man frog. That's a good looking frog. And what was the last one you said? Uh, Budget's frog. They scream. It's hilarious. Oh, yeah. I've seen these ones. This is the frog that's from the shirt. I think so. Isn't it? So they're screaming frogs. And then African bullfrog. That's the number one. Honestly, that's actually. Wait, no, you one. didn't say African bullfrog was number one. Goliath frogs like is really number two. African bullfrogs number one. Okay. Goliath frog. I'm looking that up in comparison to the African bullfrog. Yeah. Yeah, you fucked up, Billy. I, I mean, the African bullfrog should be number one. It's the gorgeous. Goliath frog's just large and just way bigger. You respect mass, exactly. All right, so so Madoff is running from the SEC, or at least charming him. He's he's like I think he was one hundred percent paying him off. I think that was an element. 
he had m- numerous uh, donations to you know politicians as well as definitely had people on payroll in the SEC. Yeah. At what point when he's running the scheme does it become just a real problem given its size? What what is a large Ponzi scheme? Um, yeah, so I think 50 million would be the bogey for me to get out. So I would put that. It's just you asked me to guess. So yeah. I'd say 50 million is is where I get out of my Ponzi scheme, my eventual Ponzi scheme. That's yeah. my number. So up, no, 50 million, 50 million for me. I could go and be very happy somewhere, 50 million in a loincloth. And that got blown through, you know, I don't know what his timeline was, but probably almost immediately. And then, you know, it just, it got out of hand. And there were so many important people that, that had money with them that were happy with the returns. They probably weren't in a hurry to to raise the red flag. Like people in government, people in um, the, the different agencies that are in charge of investigating, they probably had some money with them too. He was a darling. Every, every um, charity that had money had returns. So like every charity that invested with them was getting more money to their charity. So he was known to be, uh, you know, the guy who helped out charities. He was known as, as Billy said, like, you know, guy who helped out Jews. Like mm-hmm. he specifically stayed within, you know, his tribe as they called it. So absolute, I mean, absolute that's stud the, until he wasn't. That was, uh, yeah, no, that's, that's the thing about um, people in Ponzi schemes and just in general, like they, they are like extremely lovable and likable characters. Like they, they're, charismatic they could talk well and that that's what draws people in to be able to trust them in the first place and so like what exactly what you said from what i read like dude was liked like well liked by everybody the Crazy. term i was thinking of when i was describing that earlier is called an affinity scam so people of the same ethnic uh racial group if you that he was like scanning his own which made it like uh morally even worse Mm-hmm. I don't think you can charge someone with an affinity scam on top. So when when he's out there and he's trying to convince people to give them money, one very smart thing that he did was he he went out of his way to not look desperate for anything. So he'd be talking to somebody about an investment and then he'd say, "Okay, let me see how much money you have." And then he'd tell them, "I'm, you know, 10 million dollars minimum. I'm not going to touch anything less than that." And I'm sure that number grew as he got bigger and bigger. But he wouldn't just take any amount of money. He wouldn't right. take, you know, what might seem like a large amount of money to, to you or me. Like, I'll give you a million dollars to invest. He'd be like, I can't do it for a million. Not worth my time. And so he creates that demand where you're like, now, wait, this guy's exclusive. It's like a club where you see a line outside. You're like, oh, I want to get in there. And that's what he had going for him, um, even though it would have been very easy for him to just take whatever. But he was very calculated with how he would go about recruiting new people and the way that he would present himself to make it look like he was super successful. And then he bought a lot of shit. He he lived high off the hog for a long time. Mm-hmm. So he had he had properties everywhere, all around the world. He I think he commuted on a on a plane to work. I'm uh-huh. pretty sure I read that he he say? flew into the office every day. Well, he lived on he lived on like 70th on the east side. I'm sure he had a, yeah he had the lipstick building. I think is on 61st. He had a place. I'm sure he had some other some other spots where he would spend his time. But I read somewhere that he. He would like land a plane on the Hudson or not the Hudson, the uh, the East River and get off there just to go to work, which is just a baller move. If, if that's your money guy, though, if you see your money guy spending like that, is that a red flag necessarily? Absolutely not. I mean, people were like, I'm honored that he took my money. Honestly, <laughs> like I, I love when people say money doesn't buy happiness because all they remember is the headline and a guy who won the uh, the lotto and then his wife shot him in the face. They don't know about the millions upon millions of people who take fucking planes to work and are insanely happy. Yeah. Money buys happiness 100% of uh, 99% of the time. You know, it's the, it's the biggest piece of bullshit ever. I'm I'm still trying to figure out cuz he said that he wants to run a scam. I had I had read about this scam in 36, 1936 at the tail end of the Great Depression when people were obviously depressed and desperate when there was a guy who had died and his name was Jacob Baker in Philadelphia. And his estate was unprobated and open to anyone whose last name was Baker. And he had this huge estate and people could just apply to see if it was them. And 30, th- 3,000 people paid $10,000 a piece to stake their claim. It was $3 million in 1936. And Jacob Baker never existed. 
Like, I think you could do that today. Oh, wow. I think we're already doing that today. In the 1970s, there was a woman. Her name was Geraldine Elizabeth Carmichael. Great name because of the story, Carmichael. She created 20th Century Motor Car Corporation. People don't remember, but the 70s was the same as today with the gas prices. We had a gas crisis in the 70s where people were lining up with fucking Tupperware trying to fill up you know, stuff to buy gas. And so she said that she had a new um, 20th Century Motor Car Corporation unveiled something called the Dale that said got 70 miles to the gallon. It was futuristic looking, and she got $3 million in invest, $30 million in investment and $3 million in advanced sales, and there was no car. It never fucking existed. And we're sort of seeing this now with like the Rivians and all this kind of shit, these electric cars that are coming up with. So I think there's still some wood to chop if we yeah. put our heads to it to get people to say, hey, by the way, there's a, there's some foster money lying around. I think it's yours. Just give me 10 grand and I'll, I'll beat the bushes. Maybe he gives me 10 grand. And that's a start. Yeah. Cash you know app I mean? scams. Yeah. That's my son got, the, my son just said he was interviewing at a place that sells knives. Cutco. Yeah. Yeah. One of those things. And yeah. it's like one of those things that you never have to rebuy. Nobody ever tries to return. They wanted him to go through his Rolodex, sell to all his grandparents and stuff like that, get mm -hmm. a third of it and then move on. And that's like, you know, it's fully legal, but that's, Kind of a scam too, and it, so it's around. I just I, I gotta find. I'm I'm Team Billy and wanting to do a scam. Okay. Yeah. Um. What, what's the the modern version of the Nigerian Prince scam? Because I feel like that's that's about run its course. Yeah. Well, actually, there is a scam that's been pretty bad in the news where they're getting. Uh, the only reason this didn't happen to me, everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, this totally happened to you." But a lot of young males have been getting DMs who they think are random girls on the internet who are like and they're like oh they start kind of sexting and mm -hmm. then they say oh i'll send you pictures if you send me pictures and then these dudes are just sending dick pics and then they're like we're gonna send this to your whole family if you don't give us all this money unfortunately <laughs> kid, yeah but a high school kid ended up like doing himself in over it which is really sad damn that's like girls get i mean i had like sugar daddy like fake sugar daddies all the time yeah which jackie on yeah. Yeah. KFC got fake sugar daddy. Yeah. Because they, they basically are like, no, you don't need. The new thing now is like they'll slide into your Instagram DMs and be like, no sexual relations. Just talk, like have a conversation with me and I'll give you like a weekly allowance. That sounds great. Yeah. Right. But then they ask for like your routing and account number information. Mm -hmm. And that's where you have to stop, which is what I learned. You, you learned that the hard way? No, my, uh, someone I knew in college, um, not fell into it. She actively was like, okay, fuck it. I'll do it. And then she was talking to this dude. And then he was like, okay, what's your like account? Like what's your routing number? And she was like, I don't think that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. No, there's, there's other ways that you can pay. Exactly. And not have your service. bank account routing number. So that's what you do though, is that's the scam. Yeah. There's, um, there's an email that I've received. Uh, I've got a, a, a few times actually from somebody being like, you should always cover up your webcam. We see what you do on your computer and it, it's essentially somebody saying like i've seen you jack off and then you have to pay me money to get me to not send this to your entire contact list and it's completely fake like the person i don't jack off so i know that i'm not caught on this they picked the wrong guy to mess with and uh and so you don't respond to it but a lot of people do, a lot of dudes panic when they see that they're like oh my god i got i got that same email i got I it say, too i say i said go ahead bro <laughs> send it i don't give a shit yeah, yeah good luck so, yeah. Bill, so Billy, I actually, you know, another scam, and I don't know how this is profitable at all, but I, I took a, a quick stroll through the Instagram comments the other day, which I rarely do, uh, but I just wanted to see what they were saying. And uh, probably 70% of the comments were all from girls being like, are there any Americans oh, the here? Bots. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the bots being like, any Americans here? And then eggplant, eggplant, yeah. splash emoji, peach emoji. <laughs> yeah. And But that's like all the comments right. now. Yeah. How how are these profitable? Like somebody's paying to create these bots. Yeah. Are they actually making money? I don't know. Or it'll be like, first five people to DM me with code like puff bar, like <laughs> get $5,000 sent to their Instagram DMs. No questions asked. I don't know who's falling for them. I think it's probably like Trista. bot on bot crime. Yeah. <laughs> Trista, yeah. It's got to be, this has to or be. Or old people, I guess. This but. has to oh. be the hardest time to be a horny woman, to be an actual horny woman online. <laughs> because let's say you want to comment on a, a macro dosing Instagram post and you want to be like, who here is from Brazil? 
J A J A J A J A eggplant emoji <laughs> embarrassed J-A. face emoji. <laughs> if, what if you're a horny woman in Brazil and you really want to say that nobody's going to believe you? Yeah, yeah wow. think about all the the mail order brides who can't actually get mailed in who want to. So it's not a victimless crime. Poor yeah. girls. <laughs> They're like, I'm trying to meet a man in America. They're there to save the incels and also get a green card, and they're just stranded. That's tough, you, man. The bots are drowning out the really horny Brazilian women. <laughs> yeah, it's don't forget travesty. about Eastern Europe. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a bad time. It's a bad time to be horny. Yo, I, anytime one of my dudes get their page hacked, I just figure they they dumb or they just horny. <laughs> that's exactly how like it's exactly how it's like you clicking links you shouldn't be clicking dog like oh, yeah. you're not gonna get rich on an instagram ad it's not gonna happen dog there, there's Let one right go. now where people like you'll, you'll your instagram will get hacked and then whoever hacked it will say like will pretend they're that's it's you talking like on your instagram story and be like i just had like twenty thousand dollars like you know um deposited into my bank account like from crypto but it's like I think if you you really get hacked, they make you record it or they'll blackmail you somehow. Because I've seen actual people that I follow have this happen to them. And I'm like, this look, this is sketch, but you're the one that's recording it. And then like, you know, five days later or whatever, they're like, sorry, guys, I was hacked. And they were going to, oh. you know, hack into my bank account if I didn't say all this. Mm-hmm. You guys remember that <laughs> iChat thing where you could get people to click a link and it would change your iChat uh, status? No. Do you remember no. that, Mad Dog? Mm, mm. Like on like iMessage? Yeah, like no, no iMessage on iChat back when you hooked your your aim up uh, to your iChat. I was never on aim to be real with you. Aim? You How were? old are you? I was on aim when you had to hook it up to your iChat. I don't know what iChat is either. No, I don't really you know guys know. know what iChat is? I don't know what that is. Dude, you'd come home from school and just be like iChatting everybody while doing your homework. Am I crazy? AIM is like 90s. No, but you'd get an AIM and put it into your iChat. It was like the precursor to iMessage. I've never heard of iChat. Yeah, I don't. You guys never heard of iChat? No, I wasn't on AIM, buddy. Mm-hmm. So Avery? iChat? AIM was like my generation. What was you doing on AIM? I was. I had an AIM and it was on, through iChat. I'm about to, I don't even know what iChat is. Am man. I having like a Mandela effect moment? You might no, be. It, it appears to be real. I've just never heard of this. Okay. Discontinued instant messaging software application developed by Apple for its oh, Mac OS X. Oh, Billy, I've seen the logo, but I've never used it. Was it was on everyone's Macs back in the day. Oh. Yeah, I've seen the logo. I never used it, though. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to read off some of the comments on my most recent Instagram post. And let's see, <laughs> do you think any of these could possibly be true? This is from Zora Putnam 65. Uh, purple heart emoji. All work and no play. Uh, from Gianna Medlinger, 65. Oh, another 65. Oops, I lost my mobile number. Could I have yours? Hot dog emoji, red pepper emoji. That's a good pickup That's line. That's a good pickup line. Just it's not, not bad. Uh, from Margo Wegnar, 70. I got a new look. Can you appreciate it? Smoochy, 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 <laughs> wet, wet, embarrassed face. <laughs> uh, Fallon Ridgefabach. Hi, I'm bored and lonely. Parentheses, flower, flower, in parentheses. And then Lola Breed 72, I will fulfill all your secret desires. Heart, heart face, cat emoji, lipstick, heart emoji, winky face, demon time, smoochy, smoochy. That one sounds real. Uh, I think the bored and lonely woman is actually bored and lonely. <laughs> She's but, just trying to waste time with all the emojis. They're probably all dudes. You know what it probably is? I, I think I, I think I figured out what the scam is. They're probably all dudes, but... Each one, um, every time they they comment on something, they're counting on people to click on their profile, and then what they probably then they probably, probably have OnlyFans. <laughs> I don't even think actually they're- there could be some OnlyFans subs- uh, advertising there, but that's kind of why Elon might be not buying Twitter because there's so many bots. That's bullshit. That's not why, bro. You know what I found about Elon the other day? Well, I ain't got nothing to do with him. His but his dad, yeah, yeah, his dad impregnated his stepdaughter. Yeah, twice. twice. Well, we and not just holy. stepdaughter. I mean, that's bad that it's stepdaughter, but it's a stepdaughter that he raised from the age of four. Yeah, from four like years old, like an actual bro. child that well, he raised. As we talked that about, is a whole dweeb. As man. we talked about on the Elon Musk episode, Elon didn't grow up with some father who inherited an emerald mind. He was like pretty abusive and a pretty terrible guy, and didn't pay for his school. Yeah. So, large. I got a question for you. 
please. Um, when it comes to the Elon Twitter deal, is there any possibility that Elon, when he was he was making this arrangement, um, he sold a bunch of Tesla stock to finance purchasing Twitter? Is there any chance that he did that knowing that Tesla stock was about to go down and this was a convenient way for him to offload some of that stock without it seeming like uh, he's getting rid of it because he knows that the business is not doing well? Yeah, so every every company that has a any type of manager um, needs to give an excuse to sell stock, like you say. The only problem is, is that there's a billion dollar breakup fee for what he did with Twitter. They start uh, legal proceedings tomorrow, I believe. They have to go to that like Delaware courthouse. It's the adorable little courthouse, and it's going to get absolutely overrun by press. I think it starts tomorrow. So normally, I would say, yeah, you find reasons to to either liquidate without people wondering, geez, does he really need cash, or liquidate because you think the shit hit the fan on your stock, which you don't want people to ever know. But this is a very expensive way to do it because it could cost him a billion dollars. Yeah. But so there's yeah, better but- ways to get 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 out of your stock. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, we see it. We're on Twitter a lot. There's so many people with tons of followers who have zero interaction. Right. Like celebrities, like all sorts of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I think I think we all knew that there's a bunch of bots on Twitter. I think Elon knew that. Elon's online all the time. I think he's acting surprised by it as an excuse to not buy the company. Yeah. I mean, he's a smart guy. He knew that he knew that his replies were just swarming with bots. Even before he tried to do this transaction, I I never thought that he intended to purchase Twitter. I thought he was doing it like a little bit for the clout. And like, I mean, Lars just said, it's a very expensive situation mm-hmm. he got himself into. I don't think he ever had the intention to buy Twitter. I think he I think Elon just he kind of like flutters from things to things when he gets bored. and He's got a lot of big ideas. I think he takes a lot of Adderall. And I think he just gets like on this new <laughs> kick that he's on. And then he just decides, OK, I'm going to do this now for a while. And then he just gets bored with stuff and he moves imagine on. Imagine though, imagine that being a kick. Yeah. I think I'm going to buy Twitter. And then all of a sudden, holy shit, I said I was going to buy Twitter. And then people start giving you numbers and then you put a, a, a handle on it at $54, a share or whatever. And then all of a sudden the shit sits, you're like, what the fuck did I just do? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like me buying another, you know, carved wooden bear. Like, what the fuck am I going to do with this thing? This Wait, how many be- carved wooden bears do you own? Two now. Yeah, and I got the <laughs> Indian. I'm going to do another Indian. Like, it's it's one of those things where everyone has a little bit of, you know, buyer's regret, and there hasn't been a purchase yet. And to your point, I don't think there will be a purchase, but still, it's it, it blows my mind. And then where the stock is now, like 38 bucks, you know, this thing had come off to like 32. Tremendous buying opportunity for people who like Twitter in a market that's going like this. It's it it how manipulative that was to the market outside of him raising cash by being able to sell Tesla for a reason mm. has like deep seated consequences, deep seated investigating consequences for what he done for what he did. And it's because, you know, so many people pay attention to him. But as you said, the, the SEC lawyers are not very intelligent when it comes to so he, he could probably explain. It sounds like they're better now. They're like, better now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and and this is, you know, this has. This is a little bit more cut and dry. Like when you're talking, and I don't want to go back to Enron, but when the people in Enron, when Enron went from 90 to 36 cents or whatever, the people who were in charge at Enron sold the bulk of their stock in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Where everybody else got out at 12, 6. Yeah. You know, and, that, and that's what you're talking about. The shit's about to defend. Let's get the fuck out. And that's just downright criminal. That's not what Elon Musk is doing. I don't think he thinks Tesla's going to zero. But it's uh, nonetheless, I think it's kind of if there was some sort of nefarious reason for it, I think people would be able to uncover it. Perhaps. Yeah, I got I got a, I got a question for you, too, bro, because you kind of saw behind the fiscal curtain mm-hmm. uh, of America. Are you a pessimist or an optimist when it comes to like our economy as far as it pertains to like Wall Street? Yeah, so I'm a 100 percent pessimist. I so I, I just started this thing called the family office. Me and the guy who does this financial oh, yeah. newsletter, it's called The Water Cooler. This guy, Tyler Moran, we bought him. So we have a financial newsletter here at Barstool. It's called The Water Cooler. Tyler's a good guy. So we put $5,001 between the two of us, and we're investing it. We want to try and get 44% return to beat what Buffett did in 2019. And uh, we've been doing it for four weeks, and so far our return is around 2%, which is fucking shit in the bed. 
I have <laughs> like I don't mind doing that to him, but like in the meantime, like Annie hit me the other day. She's like, I just bought twenty grand worth of Levi's. I think uh, uh, Levi's and Strauss, you know, the original thing, like she enjoys doing that stuff. I don't because I know what the nature of this fucking dartboard is. And I've seen stocks that look like they should be higher, and particularly after we got those meme stocks, you know, thrown into our face where Radio Shack yeah. was worth more than a legitimate business where the only place you go, there's no, nobody's buying even batteries in Radio Shack anymore. So things have gotten so out of hand, Arian, and especially with your NFTs and your cryptocurrencies that I've, I've, I'm very, very skeptical on just about everything nowadays on top of knowing how I used to fuck you. Like, you know, so on top of knowing how I'm, I'm probably getting fucked and I trust my financial advisor as much as you do yours. I have a wonderful financial advisor and I've never bought or sold a share of stock without him. Um, so I'm very lucky in that respect as, as, as he had said also. So, um, but I have a skepticism about the market that's probably greater than most people. I feel like it, it, I somebody is always trying to figure out what the next uh, ethically dubious but technically legal way to make money is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it's a big cycle of, of the regulators catching up to that, saying, right. okay, okay, you can't do this, this, and this with the new technology that's out there. And then the next wave of people come in, and then now they've got their new scam, which is still – technically legal but ethically dubious then they get shut down etc 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 and I, I think that's how it goes in every industry right like every industry has tried to it, industry in general business in general is how you can fuck somebody else out of their money and make it yours yeah you know right. whether or not they're you. you know like whether or not like well, i'm buying i think large is a communist too Aaron. i think you and I'm him not, i'm selling may, i'll sell you a car <laughs> today thing. that i know is going to give him like I'm a Jaguar dealer. I will sell him a car that I know is going to give him problems. He'll look it's good in it. He'll have fun, but I'll know it's going to give him problems. Mm -hmm. That's what I'll be telling you. The nature of capitalism is to maximize profits, right. and in and it doesn't matter who it hurts, and it doesn't matter. Like you can have ethical capitalism, but it just doesn't exist in this market. This market says we got to go, and it don't matter, and we go. We go and scratch and claw, fight our way to the top, and it's just that. That's like when you see behind, because like I grew up on food stamps and the project, so like I've seen both sides of of America uh, in that in that regards. And once you see behind this curtain, it's like this is just a charade. It's just a game. And when you have money, it's it's relatively easy to continue to make money. And you see how when you don't have any money, how astronomically impossible it is to get it. It's just, and that's why I'm I'm with you, brother. I'm a pessimist to the like it just. It's too big. The pile of shit is too big. Name me, name me one industry that's not fucking you. Like I just told you, they're going to sell you a car that they know is worth fifteen percent less the the minute you drive it off. Mm -hmm. McDonald's is one of the biggest fucking companies in the world. We all know that it's poison. It's twenty two billion dollars in revenue. We know that it's fucking pink slime and that's fucking killing you. I, I mean, everything is. I got one. Man, I'm getting pessimistic. I got one. Uh, Catholic Church sports books. Sports books. Sports books. Yes. Very ethical. They're fantastic. They're great. Yeah, I got no problems They're with great. one in particular. <laughs> but I think about you, like if all of a sudden you start selling drugs or something like that and you get money and then, you know, your wife or loved one says, where'd you get all that money? And then you have big T say, hey, listen, find me uh, every bet that worked for the past six months. And he pumps into you. Oh, yeah, because I had the Mets on, on June 16th. And I had yeah. that. Like, that's exactly what Bernie is doing. I could see that happening. Yep. You know, like uh -huh. we're. Right, like yeah, you know, money through games. it's fucking crazy. Yeah, that, right? that's like, the best way to explain exactly it. what mm -hmm. Bernie was doing. Like, you find me what that foreign exchange trade. Oh, the Vietnamese bot was over the euro. I don't even know if the bot exists anymore. Blah blah. blah. Oh yeah, we traded a shitload of bot that week. Mm -hmm. You know, like oh no, yeah. I had the fucking nuggets that night. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> yeah, so that's a great way <laughs> it's to fucking crazy. Like oh, I have all the picks. Yeah, give me money yeah. and I'll bet it for you. I, I've got a very important question for Lord. Something I've always wondered in regards to the American economy. Um, what's going on in Delaware? What's up with Delaware? There's some, something is something is significantly up with that state, and I'm determined to figure out what the fuck it is. Really, Joe Bai. So, so in Delaware, you've got a couple nice places. Listen, it's it's trouble, but Dewey Beach, Rehoboth Beach, those are fun places to go for a couple days. You know, with the family, with the boys, have a good time, drink. You know, go to all the outdoor bars, eat fresh seafood. I get that. I get that allure of Delaware. Mm -hmm. That's like uh, 65 days a year where there's something to do in Delaware. Yet somehow they control all the financial laws in this country. 
and it is to every um like uh, all the different protections they're engineered to benefit exactly one part of the population and that's delaware and delaware residents so what the fuck is going on with delaware i'm embarrassed that i don't know more about it i haven't given like when i just mentioned the delaware chancery court which is where all this shit's going to go down between twitter and elon i haven't looked into it i know very little i mean i've gone through delaware yeah and, and there's not a lot there. Yeah, I've done some NASCAR. There's but it's not like a lot there. Every time, every time you get a, a, a piece of mail from any financial services company, they're always based in Delaware. Everybody is a Delaware corporation. Hey, and you know who's getting kickbacks probably for a long time for keeping it that way? Probably Hunter Biden. <laughs> the, <laughs> there's great crack in Delaware. That's what I'll say that. Is there? Oh, we got to talk about likely, that. Likely, yes. There's likely just a just a, qu- a quick Google crack. search. I, f- I think I found uh, a major reason. Uh, the advantages of incorporating um, uh, the tax benefits. Delaware doesn't impose income tax on corporations registered in the state, which don't do business in the state. So that's why every company is. Why isn't every state like that then? Because wait, some states have large uh, also also shareholders who don't reside in Delaware uh, don't need to pay. Uh, don't need to pay taxes on shares in the state. So, so what? What's the it's advantage? A tax haven. It's a tax haven. What's the advantage for Delaware though for having companies based in their state that don't have to pay taxes to them? It, it, is that just marketing, getting their name out there more? Stimulates I, the local economy. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like may, yeah, maybe, or and I think it's just like it's a state where there's not a lot of allure. So that's like let's let's make it a tax haven for big for big uh, corporations and and let's just keep it like that legislatively. So, I, it just sounds like a, it sounds like a tech, like a what's that shit they, where they take their money overseas? What is that place called? Offshore. Uh, offshore. Cayman Islands. Yeah, like uh, yeah, some shit like this. That's Switzerland. Like, we're just here, yeah. But yeah. okay, so so I'm following the logic on this mm-hmm. and um, all these major companies, they can have, they can be incorporated in the state of Delaware. Mm-hmm. So they don't pay any corporate tax to the state. But they just have like empty offices there. Like these companies don't actually, they're not actually based in Delaware, right? They're in other states where they have their big factories or they have their main offices. So they've got like a P.O. box in Delaware, maybe like a a small, small office. What's really the the big impact on the Delaware economy? I think it's just so that people see the word Delaware. Well, they also, there's like a flat fee franchise tax of $100 in a flat fee LLC tax of $250. So if you have like millions of companies based there, that's a decent amount of revenue for a small state. And plus on the personal level too, there's no social security income tax. So social security benefits are not taxed there. So that's where you get the white hairs down there. There's no state or local sales tax. There's no inheritance tax. There's no personal property tax. So if you're a, you know, a fucking four iron away from the tip of the Jersey shore, how do you get people to, cho- to choose to go across that little thing? Offer them no taxes. Hmm. Okay. I might have to just incorporate myself in Delaware. There's a separate <laughs> court system. <laughs> a separate court system? Yeah. So I think we need to shut down the whole thing until we can figure out what the hell is going on. <laughs> shut Joe down Biden. Delaware and yeah. investigate. <laughs> yeah. We need to investigate Delaware. <laughs> have, has anybody in this room ever been to Delaware? Yes. Or not counting passing through on a train. And on a train, I it was I drove through there on the way to West Virginia. Why does that not count? Have have you? I don't ever, think I have, but why would that not count? I'm just trying like, to. Like, have you ever been to Delaware have for you ever, Delaware? Like, spent time? Well, yeah. no, I of course spent, not. Have Who you has? spent an evening in Delaware? I've spent a couple evenings in Delaware, but it could have been Maryland. Does and Delaware I, I, I wouldn't exist? know the difference. It might not. It could have been. Maryland. <laughs> it looked a lot like Maryland to me. Smelled like Delaware's, Maryland. Delaware is not real, huh? Is is Delaware just part of New Jersey that they make us think is Delaware? It could be. Is it a fishing well, right? No, it's it's uh yeah, it might be a Finland situation yeah. where Finland doesn't exist. It's just a, a, a puppet uh not even a puppet state, it's just like a, a figment uh district that is actually Russian and they use it to control the fishing Maybe rights. It's a deep state, it's just deep. It, it is, is a state, but it's a deep state. The Delmarva Peninsula is Delaware, Maryland, Virginia. That's why they call it the Delmarva Peninsula. But Del there's nothing different about Delaware from like rural Maryland or coastal Maryland. It could very well be the same place. I just don't understand why <laughs> something fishy is going on. We probably have some listeners in Actually, Delaware. Actually, draft Mangold. up the shirt, Delaware isn't real. Mangold owns a house in Delaware. Does he? And Clem goes down there for a week every year with his family. 
Those are the only two people I know who go to Delaware. I mean, outside I, the Biden thing. See, so you, you, so you Clement is man called. <laughs> You pick you pick the one guy Clem that I don't want to I don't want to harm him you don't, with anything. Right. So yeah. let's call off the investigation. Okay. If him and his family get to have a nice wholesome vacation right. once a year, uh, fine. Let Delaware do this. Right. Cheap tobacco. That's why I stopped there. Because of the tax. No, yeah, they have no uh, no sales tax. Yeah, right? I was like I was it was before my fight, and I was like I cannot wait to pack a dinger after this fight for the first time in a month, and I'm gonna get cheap. Dingers here. I remember driving dinger. driving with my mom through Delaware at one point, and uh, we made sure to stop at Hardee's in Delaware before we got across state lines because you could save like 10 cents on your order because there's no income tax. What are your thoughts on Hardee's? Good question. It reminds me a lot I, of Carl's. I, it's the same company. Same I, I think Hardee's is on, fine. I, I, on, really. <laughs> I liked when they went all in on the, you know, everybody was doing the health craze when it came to fast food. And Hardee's was like, fuck it. We're going to do four patties and we're going to put three kinds of cheese on it. And it's going to have 2,500 <laughs> calories and you're going to like it. Great advertising at Hardee's. Yeah. Food is. I liked it when I was in college. Um, yeah. When I. I it's just not it ain't it anymore I, I tried it recently maybe like three months ago and i was like i don't remember it being this bad i i had the opposite because i went to the west coast recently and i was like everyone's talking about in and out and stuff and i had in and out and i was kind of like eh. and then i was driving and i had to stop quickly and i had hardy's and it like overperformed so now my brain thinks that hardy's is better than in and out because in and out let me down where hardy's was better than i thought Got it. So you're you're buying stock in Hardee's and you're selling it in and out. Yeah, I knew, by the way, Carl's and Hardee's was the same thing. Can I ask Big T? And I think this might be something we agree on. So I'm sending my kid down to Alabama in a couple of weeks. He's going to start college down there. And I went to a place down there called Cookout. Have you ever been to Cookout? I've been to Cookout many, many times. Is it? I, I consider it to be elite. I'm so, not a huge fast food. Have you been to Cookout? Yeah. It's so good. here's the okay. thing about Cookout. Okay. I thought I found some. Like you went there in the middle of the day and loved it? Yeah. No, no, I went late at night drunk. Okay. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the thing. If you go at 1 p.m., it's it's going to take a drastic step down. If you go at midnight, it's going to be the best shit you've ever had. Also, it's like $3. Yeah. You can get, and the sides are other entrees. which is Corn dogs. You can get a burger, a corn dog, and chicken nuggets, and a milkshake for like three fifty. That's incredible. Yeah. Cookout. I, su I support cookout. Yeah, it's, it's the best. I lived right next to one my senior year of college. It was every... Three times a week at 11 p.m., my roommates would be like, we're going to cookout. And I'm like, I'm not going. And then they'd walk out the door and I'd be like, fuck, give me two seconds. So wh where are you at on Hardee's? I'm not a, I'm not a Hardee's fan. Decent breakfast. Not I, I haven't had Hardee's and I don't even know how long. But solid breakfast after that, it's not very good. Yeah, it's, it's a very exactly average place as far as I'm concerned. Great ads, though. Very, very solid marketing campaign. Are you talking about the Paris Hilton one? Uh, I was more specifically thinking of the Kate Upton one. But. Okay. But they've had several in their long line of uh, advertisements. Yep. Um, large, another kind of basic finance question. And then I, I'm sure that you have to piss at some point. So you, you're, you're free to go uh, whenever after I'm done asking you this question. So. Oh, I got, I, got, I got one more question after that. Okay. Um, my yeah. first question is just why, why would a company – explain to me like I'm a child. Why would a company choose to go public? when they're let's say they're doing very successful it's a manufacturing company mm -hmm. they've been successful they've been a family-run company for 20 years they're doing great making a good profit everybody's happy why would a company ever choose to go public and then subject itself to the whims of all the shareholders and then that completely changes the way that they govern their business yeah 100 percent. it's capital so you can go two ways to find capital to get growth right you need capital to get growth so when we open up our first cookout Right. And we want to keep opening up cookouts. No one's ever seen them before. We can either borrow money to make it bigger or we can go and find investors, which is essentially what you do when you go public. So the the way that you have um, the way the quickest way to raise money without any cost to you is to sell shares. Right. Because you're still going to have you're going to still have a majority of ownership for the most part. So you're going to get to take uh, part in this growth that you believe in because it's your core business. And so if you don't want to leverage yourself to where you're paying a bank, then you open it up to investors. And, you know, for the most part, it works. Right. Like you're saying that the downside of it for you is that you have to answer to strangers who weren't there when you opened up that first restaurant. Like, well, that's. Right. Like you don't want to be at the scrutiny of the stockholders. Yeah. But every one of those stockholders then has, you know, 
invested in you and legitimized your company and put you on the map, you know, with the big boys. I mean, private companies only work for extremely successful business plans. And for the most part, most people don't have extremely successful business plans, right? So th that's probably the short answer. Yeah, it just seems to me like it'd be a big pain in the ass. I'm just thinking of it from that perspective. Like if you run a company- There's a prestige involved with it. Yeah. That, you know, on top of it being a, a pain in the ass, it does legitimize most businesses. And uh, most people know that if you're going to achieve growth as quickly as you want to, you do have to open it up to outside investors or leverage yourself to the fucking gills okay. by, by borrowing money at a bank. Okay. There is- there is the element of going from private to public company to someone who's like, I worked for a company when it was going from private to public, not this one actually, but there's a huge switch in maximizing like employee, like interests and owner interests, then getting switched to maximizing shareholder interest. Yeah. That's something that hugely mixes up companies. I, I think the bottom line is still the bottom line. Right. If you call it uh, profits or if you call it uh, earnings per share, it's still how much money that you're making. So, you know, you can repackage it like you're saying, but I think the bottom line is to to make money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aaron, what's your question? Then we got to we got to keep in mind that large has a piece of metal I'm, shoved I'm, up I'm, his kidney. I'm, yeah. I'm staining. Un unreal that you have other shit to do, man. Kind of unforgivable. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's kind of cool. Uh, cool question to wrap this whole thing up, man. If you had a magic wand, given all your knowledge to fix the the holes in the system that you see, uh, what what would it be? Maybe one or two things, maybe three, whatever you feel like to, to just fix it, to just clean up the mess. Sure. So I, I'll speak from a trading standpoint because that's what I used to do. I was a trader. Mm -hmm. There should be some depth of market. Aaron, if I was to go and buy or sell a share of stock right now, there is an absolute, I don't know where any bodies lie in Duke Power. We'll use that again. We'll go back to DUK, that same stock that I was talking about. If I needed to see where there were people, where there was supply and where there's demand, it's almost impossible to recognize because everybody who's a buyer or a seller keeps their cards extremely close to the vest. And that causes... Um, it just it just causes people to not know what to do. That causes extreme volatility until somebody decides to be like, "Oh shit, yeah, I'll sell stock here." the The amount of secret uh, of of secret positions within the stock market, I think, ruins it so much so that one of the most successful vehicles that has been introduced to trading in probably the last thirty years is something called a dark pool. It's, it, it, it started when I first started trading, and obviously it's all over the place now, where it's the glory hole of trading. People don't have to give their names. They don't have to give shit, but you put what you want to do in the stock into this dark pool. And if you pay money to belong to that dark pool, I can put the other side in, and then hopefully we meet up. So you look at a stock where there's nothing offered and there's nothing bid for, but you put something in a dark pool and you'll trade a million, you trade a million shares right on the fucking last sale. That's not healthy. Like to not have any kind of depth of market or know where the bodies lie in every single issue that's on every single stock exchange, I don't think is healthy. So if somehow we can get some sort of transparency, I guess the word that I'm looking for, some transparency and some depth of market, I think people could be a little bit more honest with the way that they trade. You okay. Know? Yeah. If that makes sense. I don't know if it makes sense, but yeah. No, it does. It does. I appreciate yeah. it, man. All right. Very cool, Large. Thank you for joining us. Touch boys. Thanks. Uh, Twisted History. Twisted History. Check it out. Subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Water Coolers. But yeah, Twisted History. Fuck the Water Coolers. No, All right. Twisted yeah, History. Yeah, Large and Vibs. Great podcast. Although Vibs is a piece of shit on lowering the bar. And he makes everybody puke in the office. Ruins our days. Uh, I have to piss myself. <laughs> yeah. Good thanks, luck, man. Boys. Seriously. I'm rooting Feel for better. you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, boys. Large was brought to you by our great friends over at Concrete. That's right. Concrete is back. Yes, Billy. Dude, I used concrete this morning. It is creatine HCL. This stuff is the best. Creatine monohydrate. It has all the problems. Digestive, uh, bloating. Creatine HCL is one. I actually think it tastes a little better chemically. And this concrete is flavored on top of it. I threw it into my pre-workout this morning. You don't require as much uh, water retention. So you don't have to be chugging and pissing all day. Um, it, honestly, I am kind of feel the gains already. 
but that's probably placebo. But I know that after using this for, I like, I use this every time I work out. I can't, I'm so happy we have another one of these ads because we had these ads before. I've been using it ever since and it's been working. Okay, I love it, Billy. That wasn't even on the script. That was just off the top of Billy's head. That's great, great ad read there, Billy. Even though you didn't read anything, you just read your own brain. I've got some myths and facts about creatine. A myth, creatine is a type of steroid. A fact, creatine is a natural molecule that your body produces and it's present in various foods because your body needs more than it makes. A myth, creatine is used to bulk up. A fact, creatine helps with lean muscle gains, increased strength, endurance, and fitness. It's the number one bioavailable creatine with 70% greater greater plasma uptake than standard creatine, which is the creatine monohydrate that Billy talked about. This is better creatine. It's the only microdosing creatine. You take one small scoop per 100 pounds of body weight. You don't have to load yourself up with it. Your brain uses about 20% of the creatine in in your body just to think. Concrete fuels your body and your mind. Take control of your health, both body and mind. Build a better you with concrete. Register now at concrete.com slash podcast. That's con-cret.com slash podcast. Receive a free membership to Planet Fitness for an entire year, plus a $500 Walmart Visa gift card. That's incredible. Available now and online and in store at Walmart. Check it out. All right, let's do some voicemails and then wrap it up. Hi, this is Brian from Ellicott City, Maryland. I have a two-part question. The first part is if you could settle any land in the whole world, like in a draft, which area would you pick? And my second question is, is Joe Flacco a elite quarterback? Thanks. Stay handsome and gorgeous, and I'll hang up and listen. Okay, second question first. He won a Super Bowl. So there you go. Uh, first question, settle any land? Yeah, so like you could be the first one to settle, settle any land. Wait, Arian said no. You don't think he's elite? No. Super Bowl champion. So? So he's elite. So is Trent Dilfer. <laughs> so you're saying Trent Dilfer's elite. <laughs> that right there – Unintentionally, unintentionally, that was the exact conversation that you will always have with somebody when they get into the Joe Flacco debate. Like verbatim, Trent Dilfer always gets brought up. As cooking, a I'm cooking up another quote card now. Yep. There you oh, go. Fuck. Uh, New Zealand. Good choice. How about how about how about making a quote card that makes me look favorable? How about that? <laughs> don't do as fuck. well. Uh, yeah, they don't do like no one's like, yeah, good point, Aaron. People people won't <laughs> amplify that message. We we put out a like and retweet for you last week. Yeah, we did. Thanks, thanks, man. I would say uh, <laughs> the Galapagos Islands. Yeah, I was thinking you're, something you're like really That's... a very pleasant place. Yeah, you got Dude. beaches there. You got cool animals, flora, fauna. Bro, you got no agriculture there. What are you talking about? No, you got you got cool shit everywhere. I know, but like. Are, are we surviving there? Are we like, when he said settled, he means turn like, it to some safari, bro. He just, are we, he said fish. settled. I, I feel like that's in a, uh, you know, continue this discussion real quick. I have to take a, a fast pass deuce. I'll be okay. very quick. <laughs> this is just an emergency. An okay. emergency. Uh, touching, touching cotton. Tell him he's touching cotton. He's, he's touching cotton. I am. <laughs> what does that mean? Like, yeah, when you people say touch grass. Touching- Touching no, no, oh. touching cotton like, means like think about what would be touching cotton if you had to shit real bad, Billy. Oh it's toilet God. paper, oh, you paper idiot. Early. What the the shit's t- touching cotton? Like yeah. his butt is I'm gonna be honest, I thought that was some sort of like reference to nah, the tur- the turtle head poking out and yeah. it's touching cotton. Time to go. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say uh Bora Bora for, for a place to settle. Mm. Just somewhere real nice like that. Set up a better government. But but just I mean that's that's got to be where you'd go. I don't see. I'm, I'm, I'm I don't have a problem with that. Bora Bora is definitely in my top to go places. Bora Bora, Saint Martin, places go to mm. Montana. Uh. <laughs> you don't believe that shit. Yeah, I do. <laughs> no, okay. Billy loves lay it on me. Lay it on me, Billy. Why? Well, why do you like Bora Bora or one of those places? Because it's tropical. Uh, Tropical, away from people, good agriculture, like you were pointing out Ooh. with PFC. But is there so actually good planting there? I don't know about Bora Bora. It's beautiful. I was talking about New Zealand. New Zealand, oh, yes, New- it's very yeah, good. I agree with that. Very good agriculture. Yeah. yeah. So, but why Montana? Uh, I think it would be just a perfect place to set up 
uh, we're settling it, right? Yeah. For some reason, I just imagine like settlers, like we're we starting, are settlers. so we're going like okay. those places. You have to deal with disease. I, I thought I thought we were doing more substance stuff, like you have to deal with like large, uh, like huge weather swings. Not that Montana doesn't have that, but uh, it's pretty wild. This plain yeah, land. At, at first, when he said settle, I just thought he meant like just live there. Take it. But yeah, but when you you're talking about creating a new yeah then what you said originally makes sense yeah like yeah. agriculture like you have to start planting uh -huh, you gotta shit. start yeah think about fresh water sources pioneer also. like because there, there's a lot of salt water in those tropical places but finding fresh mm -hmm. water yeah especially i'm not for, sure bora bora is good i don't know i don't know but i haven't done enough research in a bora bora but i know new zealand would be perfect new zealand would be, oh and dude if you had to shut that place down like you're so safe from like everything yeah i think i would Except settle water like an east coast island like a martha's vineyard or nantucket type i just like it up there is there like no one the thing about the question is there like no one there no you're settling it so like you're the first person to see it well, sure then, oh, you're then, the first person to settle on it so then oh actually i changed my answer totally that, new york oh yeah it's new true. york the reason why new york is probably the financial hub of the world is because it has the greatest natural port of all time the city of manhattan uh, in like the New York Harbor is one of the greatest natural ports ever. And that's why it became such a big trading hub. It was the mouth to new world to Europe and it's just goaded. Like that's, and we bought enough about the New York trading, but you port. don't get, you don't get all of the profits that come with settling New York. No, but like if you're the first settlers, you kind of, New York's one of the best spots because yeah. you then are able to get stuff you need to settle better people naturally will come there just because it's a safe port and doesn't have too many storms um and is a safe place like that like the history of new york uh is fascinating because like the reason why this city is you know uh quote unquote like the best city in the world uh very I, much I, in quotations i know but from a f like yes it's a, a trading a practical hub. standpoint yeah it's a huge trading hub and is like uh, one of the largest economies is because it was such a huge uh, trading spot it's just like naturally like it like if you had to design a freshwater port that is i New mean York. yeah amazing i'm just thinking of a place that i'd like to hang out for a, a while i do like to hang out here though so okay you want to do the next one or want to wait for pft let's do the next one we can, we can, the next we can one. give them spark notes yeah what up macro and crew this is matt from chicago i have an avatar related question which is not in reference to Aries Blue Friends, but rather the anime cartoon Avatar The Last Airbender. A uh, very straightforward question, uh, but one that I go back and forth with all the time. If you could choose between the different bending abilities, that is fire bending, water bending, air bending, and earth bending, which would you choose? Uh, curious to hear everyone's thoughts. Thanks and uh, stay beautiful. Bye -bye. Um, this is a go to show. This is the reason why I picked this question. I love yeah, this, this show is a growing up. Great show. Appa, yip, yip. Uh, again, again <laughs> the movie. I I'd advise people to watch the movie, but do not get your hopes up. The actors, except for one of them, as he's a legit actor, the rest of them are all shit. They are it's just some of the worst acting you'll ever see. But the graphics are fucking fire <clears throat> and the storyline is pretty close to the original series, so it's pretty dope. I enjoyed it a lot, um, and so. But to answer my man's question, I gotta go with water. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely been water because it's it's seventy percent of the earth, and you could bend it to the point of walking on it, and so you could fly with it. You could do whatever you want with it. Um, it'll kill fire. It'll drown everything. So and humans are seventy percent water. water. I don't. Can you bend somebody and somebody? Somebody. I'm trying body? to remember I, if there was a point in the show where they talked about that. Because yeah, I don't. I don't remember if they did or not. Imagine in you my, just sucked the water out of somebody and killed them. But you can like dust. you can bend. You can kind of how Eleven does in Stranger Things. You can like move a person based on the water in their body. Like, no, okay, that's it. I didn't know it was something cool like that. I gotta watch Stranger Things. My kids have been like hounding me. To Aaron, watch Stranger you gotta Things. watch Stranger Things. Yeah, everybody been telling me. I, I'm gonna get on it. I'm gonna get yeah. on it. I, I'm in the middle of watching Love Island UK. <laughs> So, so it's a really good one. I love, I love Love Island. No, Avatar growing up was like the goaded show. I would, I wanted an Appa so badly. It was insane. I had an Appa, I think I had an Appa stuff in. So I've never watched this. Explain to me what bending something entails. 
So All right, so bending you go uh, so yeah so so bending is just like um they they do like a ritual like movement or whatever and it, and they can manipulate uh an element i i'll be it water or fire earth would be like dirt and and wind they call them the airbenders and so they 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 like do all these movements and they manipulate the element in whatever way that they want or what they see they, that they see fit and so it, it basically which element would you want to control yeah. so if i could bend fire i can like throw fireballs at people and shit yeah yeah yep yeah i'm gonna go with that, that pft if you could have a boy uh hey maddie he uh he the antagonist in zuko story, man. yeah <laughs> how do i remember do you remember okay, the the, you know? the, anta the antagonist of the story big team chose to bend fire and they tried to take over the world did you watch yeah. the show avatar it's the only last if billy Airbender? pinches him I, I most certainly did not. Okay, so the question is, if you could choose between controlling earth, wind, air, or fire, which one would you pick? Ooh. God, that show's so good. Now I'm gonna go watch it. Oh, shit. Man. Does air include temperature? Um, Sure, for the fuck of it. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I think I would want air okay. and just always be 75 degrees. That's good. You would be Avatar. That sounds the pretty good The last airbender, to me. PFT, the last airbender. Hell yeah. I and also, if you, had, if, you had, if you had air, you could control the wind. So you could like sweep yourself around, could like block your opponent's field Fly. goals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would do. Air. For I, sure. I do water. Well, hold on, hold on. Yeah, okay, I was about to say I, every, everything's accounted for. Yeah. I, I I was I was water, big T was fire, your air. Wait, who's nobody, earth? No, no, nobody nobody wants to do earth, huh? I, earth's kind of Earth's yeah, played out. Lame. I just kind want off. Like what are we gonna do? Just like create piles of dirt? Earth fell off. No, like Can you he move could... dirt. Yeah, he would like. Yeah, you, you could move the ooh, ground, and then you basically. can basically poof, and you make an earthquake from nothing. <laughs> I know, I know exactly hole. what you're talking. about. They don't know what you're talking about, Maddie, but I'm with you, dog. Aaron, can you see me doing it? Basically, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You see, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like they do like these little movements, and yeah, they like, and then it like fire. shakes the ground. It looks like you're eleven from Stranger Things, the way that they actually, do it. I'd become an earthbender and then make a ton of money just building shit, like doing excavation. <laughs> Okay. You can have you, you no would, hypotheticals where you're not making money, man. It's just sad. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, I mean, what would you, you, you bro? Like he asked you, what what would you settle? And you chose New York so you can have ports, so you can trade and make money. It's just crazy, bro. Well, it's not. It's just crazy. It's just like, what are you gonna do out there if you're like enjoy hey, life, you man? Survive. Enjoy life, bro. God damn. It's very funny that Billy like took Earth, but then he he wanted a construction career yeah. out of it so he's like <laughs> well you guys are gonna be doing that shit and get bored with it and you, you got like you got to think about something no what do you mean i'm gonna bend water and i'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom and i'm gonna explore that motherfucker moving shit out the way bro what do you, yeah, mean? you, you can't can make, breathe you can you can make a water bubble around you you, you are a water bender but you can't breathe water, the water so if you're in but a you can water make, you can bubble make, you can make a bubble around you so that you can breathe your so it, air it only and orbits, then you can go down orbits. you're a water bender wait but can air can the air bender also I could bring air on bitch, the water i could spit that bitch like moses dog and walk <laughs> through the whole ocean okay what did you talk i could take it i could go to sleep in the middle ocean with nothing around me that sounds very peaceful you could float like a you can do whatever you stars want stars above me that's lit actually mm -hmm. that's a cool you can little a, date you can grab onto right a here. shark babe you know what we about to do i'm about to air water bend the ocean out the way and we about to have a date in the pacific exactly Feel? that'd be sick it's romantic as fuck hey, how many brownie points i get for that <laughs> wait till a tentacle just reaches into your no little... but you are a no, waterbender no, no, no. but you bro, can't move bro, a tentacle I'm, little bro, tentacle I am comes getting, in and grabs bro, you bro i'm giving myself at least three football fields so i don't want nothing even getting close to me do <laughs> you think i'm gonna have it like regular club no 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 this ain't gonna be an aquarium yeah you can push them I'm away like a bit, yeah just yeah get them, you and can then, use and water to you're, poof. And you're for sure not going to be bothered by any human because ain't nobody going to come out. That's, no, that's lit. Mm -hmm. That is lit. There's no camera on Mad Dog, but Mad Dog just six times has gone whoop, towards me. I don't know how else to do I know, I know, I know exactly what she's doing. If you, if you watch the people out there who have watched uh, the uh, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, you know exactly what she's talking about. He has the arrow on his head. Yeah. Wow. God, that's so good. It's a fire show. You like it. If you like anime, it's, it's an American anime, so it's not like true anime. But if you like anime... It's a great story, man. I would construct an underground high-speed rail system in the whole of the United States using my earthbending abilities. Okay, I'm down with that. <laughs> Use that it for the greater good. Yeah. That would benefit okay. everybody. Deal. Yeah, Deal. but that's just, again, like you're just going so... 
like capitalistic. Well, I'm almost. going to LA to New York in three, three hours. hours. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> if you had air, imagine the the type of dog fighting maneuvers you could pull off. I'd dig a hole to China, and I'd be thrust vectoring be all over the place. I'd be jumping in my hole to China, and then gravity would take me one end, and then I'd go That'd the be, other. Then, but flip. that's Earth, not air. Yeah. yeah, I'm doing Earth. Oh, okay. So then you're like you you like hit a slingshot, you jump into your hole, you uh you um fall down and you hit terminal velocity, and then you hit the other end of the hole where gravity flips, and then you go from terminal velocity to zero, and then you start falling the other way, terminal velocity, and then you just ricochet boom 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 till you're trapped in the middle. <laughs> that sounds that sounds intense. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do one more. Okay. Make this a quick one. Okay. Hey y'all, it's uh, this is Maxwell from Katy, Texas, and hey. you know all y'all are beautiful. Uh, you know some, some of y'all are just beautiful and just want to say your hands. You know y'all are beautiful, just stay beautiful you now. They're all it, it, they're all beautiful ways to talk about each other. So if y'all had to be a cryptid, like Bigfoot, the Loch Ness monster, like a cryptid, not an animal, not a cat, not a house cat, but a cryptid. What would y'all be? Um, all right. Uh, I guess that's it. Uh, just keep rocking. I love it. Uh, the Cohen episode was beautiful. All right. Have a good night, y'all. I like the Mothman. Thank you, Maxwell. That was the most Texas person I've ever talked to or ever heard. Pretty sure that was yeah, a fake too. voice. Oh. Yeah, I had to, well, yeah, I mean, Katy, Texas is like 20, 30 minutes, well, 40 minutes that way. I ain't never heard nobody talk like that, but I mean, they be out there. I think the Mothman. Mothman seems like he has a good time. He comes down, tries to warn people. It's a useful cryptid. No one hunts the Mothman either. Like people are always hunting the jackalope, the yeah. chupacabra. Yeah, they're they're hunting Bigfoot. No one really cares about the Mothman. I would want to be a Yeti. Not mm. Bigfoot. Bigfoot's a little small. The Yeti, just like way bigger Bigfoot. Great coolers. Yeah, just like chill <laughs> up on your mountain. Not many people can get there. Yeah, but it sounds yeah, lonely. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, if you're a cryptid, you're probably lonely, right? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. All I think, uh, are are, va are vampires <laughs> cryptid? Technically, oh, I think we should do a lycanthropy episode. A what? Lycanthropy. Oh, that is. Oh, you'll find out. Okay. Cool. I vote if, Mothman. If, though. If, if vampires are cryptid, I would like to be a vampire. Vampires, I think they get a bad rap in a lot of our lore. They're, they're probably cool. Would you would you uh, harvest your blood naturally or uh, get it from a blood donor? Got to eat, girl. I'll so you <laughs> artificial consumption of blood or natural consumption? Yeah, are we talking about drinking some of that baby blood? Hey. I mean, I, I'm I'm all, I'm not gonna eat kids, but. I'm definitely some of these adults out here with bad ideas. I'm down to get Aaron them wants a couple. Adrenochrome. Uh, yeah. No, I, I think would, no. I would straight harvest on everybody in Congress. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I by the way, I don't think they're drinking it. I think they're getting infusions. Okay. All right. Just <laughs> glad we cleared that up. No, because yeah, I saw this that distinction. <laughs> I saw this article about Vladimir Putin takes baths in baby reindeer blood. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Because he's trying to cure whatever disease he has. All right. And then I saw this other study about how if mice get blood infusions from baby mice, they reverse age. Crazy. Okay. Well, thank you for joining Macrodosing. <laughs> we appreciate you guys. We love you guys. We'll be back on Thursday for nanodosing. Uh, and then we'll see you guys in, again next week. Very excited to have Billy back. Billy, oh, thank you. Your presence is welcome like, on the show. I just like all the information that's been in my brain for the past month and just like... A tidal yeah, wave. Like, that was the first hour of the show. You've been no fap on on your brain dumps, and then it just all came out at once. No facts. Yeah, yeah. I was no facts. All right, we'll see you guys on Thursday. Love you guys.